2018. December 12th, 2018. Um, again, like to welcome everybody. And um, once we get situated here, we'll go ahead and do the Pledge of Allegiance. And we're going to ask everybody to stand. Okay. So I'm going to ask everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So now we're going to go to item 2.1, and um, Michelle is going to lead us in this. So thank you. So I get to do the honor of um, celebrating the three um, outgoing board members, and then as is customary, we always um, also recognize our um, president and vice president. So, um, so first I'm going to go in chronological order. So I'm going to start with Willie Yahido. And Willie, as many of you know, has, is a cornerstone of our community. He's been on the board for over 28 years um, and dedicated um, much time and attention. Um, him and his wife were um, significantly involved in the community, and he continues to be involved in every aspect. He's one of the only board members I know that regularly, almost on a monthly basis, goes to a school site council meeting of one of his schools. And so he has, um, he has done a great commitment and we are so appreciative of all of the work um, that he has done. And um, so in recognition of him, then um, we not only have this atrarium for him, um, which we, for all of you, only needs to be watered once a month. So <laughs> <laughs> So um, low maintenance and um, also can go um, in any location that he wants. Um, so we have this in recognition of him. And um, I know some board members want to say a few things. And then we actually are also have a surprise from um, our mayor as well. And so if board, uh, fellow board members would like to say a few words um, to Willie. Hi, Willie. Um, not only have you been a very distinguished employee of this school district as a teacher and a coach, and I still hear people see you, point you out, and pat you on the back and shake your hand and call you coach. Um, you've, been, you, you've made a very important and special difference in the lives of so many students and families here in the Pajaro Valley. I want to thank you for your many years, your 28 years of leadership on this board at, in times that were very, very difficult and in times that were wonderful and great. You've overseen the building of many schools and you were able to finish your dream of building out Pajaro Valley High. And I want to um, thank you very, very much. And from my heart to yours, I'm going to really miss you. I, I really appreciate, in particular, the historical feel you bring here, the historical perspective that you've always brought to our decision making, and that's going to be missed. Thank you for your service. And um, Willie, I wanted to thank you especially because when I, um, well, not for everything, but I'll never forget when I first ran for the uh, school board, uh, we campaigned together, and um, you really, um, shared, again, your historical knowledge with me and really mentored me. You were a wonderful mentor. And um, as Kim said, uh, it is so appreciated when this board has had really tough decisions to make um, that may have consequences that we wouldn't have recognized, but you brought um, your history on the board and helped us, really helped a lot in us making um, good decisions for these students. You're going to be missed, and um, yes, I know many people who you taught as well, including my ex-husband. <laughs> he remembers you, so um, thank you so much, and we're not going to lose touch. Thank you. 
So uh, my history with Willie goes back uh, back to the 1989 earthquake. You may or may not know this, but my wife uh, went in the 89 earthquake. My wife and Willie Yahiro's daughter, Joy, were in the building, the two of them together, when the earthquake hit. And the first time I heard about Willie Yahiro, I was told the story how Willie came and took my wife and drove a 16-year-old girl he'd never met and drove two hours away from his family to make sure she got home safe and sound. Uh, that's integrity. That is doing the right thing. <laughs> Willie, uh, that's your life story right there. That's your life story right there. So uh, congratulations on the next chapter. Right. So, um, Lowell, if you would like to come up um, to present the proclamation. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. So bear with me. Good evening, board members. Lowell Hurst here, uh, former mayor of uh, Watsonville, and we have uh, Paco Estrada, uh, the current mayor, right here. If he would come up here. We'll, we'll see how he pronounces all these words, too. Uh, I'm going to read all this, okay? Whereas, Willie Hero served the Pajaro Valley School District community as a trustee for Area 4. That's 4, right? I'm not up to my Roman numerals all the time. Uh, area 4 for 28 years since 1990, representing all students, including his son, Jeff, and daughter, Joy, who attended PVUSD schools, staff, and families, lead the board uh, the board as president, led the board as president in 94, 96, 2011, and 2013. That's more times than I've been mayor. Whereas Trustee Yehiro's commitment to the district began after having dedicated 12 years as a teacher and athletic coach at Watsonville High School. In 1988, he helped organize the first grad night to promote sober and safe graduation nights. Upon leaving his teaching career, Mr. Yehiro was inspired to run for the Board of Trustees with the purpose of improving academic achievement as well as financial stability. He supported the district through recessions, I remember that one, bankruptcy, budget uncertainties, consistently reassuring the community that all decisions were made for the benefit of students and the ongoing operational health of the district. And, can you well, read that? It's yeah. small print. <laughs> Whereas Trustee Yahiro has been instrumental in securing community support for the addition of 15 schools since the beginning of his tenure as trustee, including Pajaro Valley High School, effectively relieving overcrowding in PVUSD schools. He was a strong supporter of Measure J in 2002 that allowed for upgrades and expansions to Watsonville and Ap Aptos High School, and of Me Measure L in 2012, a $150 million bond to upgrade, repair, modernize, and improve facilities and improve technology in all schools. And whereas Trustee Yahiro has been a champion supporting increased graduation rates, decreased student dropout rates, effective career technical education pathways, and consistent improvement in student achievement. His commitment to students and staff has been evident through each and every negotiation session, remaining loyal to maintaining a sustainable district budget that is reflected in his appreciation for staff and student-centered priorities. Whereas Trustee Ahiro's has consistently demonstrated unswerving advocacy for parental involvement, encouraging parental engagement through participation in school events, and promoting dialogue with their students, teachers, staff, and administration. Through almost three decades, Trustee Yahiro maintained close ties to his community, welcoming opportunities for open communication with students, family, and staff, attending school, 
community, and other key agencies' events. And whereas Trustee Yahiro ensured that his voice at the board meetings through his 28-year tenure consistently expressed his support and appreciation for students, teachers, classified staff, administration, and his constituents, establishing positive relationships through the district and the community. Whereas Trustee Yahiro understands the importance and fervently supported a well-rounded experience for every student that includes access to athletics, arts, and music, relevant college and career pathways, and access to social-emotional support. Through his involvement in the district and community uh, committees as a PUSD trustee representative, including intergovernmental safety, dropout benefits, uh, Pajaro Valley Prevention and Student Assistance, and site and facilities committees, Mr. Yahiro ensured that PVUSD students' best interests were at the heart of all decisions. And whereas Mr. Yahiro has been a solid advocate for positive discipline through preventative and intervention services, effectively reducing student expulsion and suspension rates, and offering access to a alternate, alternative in-school learning and enrichment opportunities. Whereas Trustee Yahiro worked closely with Superintendent Dr. Michelle Rodriguez in developing a plan to effectively address contact from immigration officials, thereby ensuring the safety and protection our, of our most vulnerable student and family rights. And whereas recognizing bullying as an important, as a matter that negatively impacts all student per experience, Mr. Yahiro supported having guidelines in place to create positive school environments for both physical and emotional safety and whereas trustee our hero dedicated endless hours to ensure understanding of items brought before the board thereby making informed decisions that kept his commitment to students and staff at the center for for this he is commended and therefore i lowell Hurst, former mayor of the city of watsonville in the state of california do hereby commend willie a hero for his many accomplishments and wish him much success in all future endeavors. I therefore uh, set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Watsonville to affix on this 12th day of December, 2018, and it's signed by Paco, Paco Estrada. So this is a collector's item. Commendations, Willie, commendations. Uh, well, I just wanted to thank everybody for, for the honor of being able to represent Area 4 over the years. It is, it is, it is really an honor to, um, to have uh, been elected and and the area elections work um and and i just want to offer my mm -hmm. uh praise to to uh, uh daniel dodge for um winning this um daniel are you here there he is right there all right daniel thank you and and um and i just want to say this about his uh grandfather that i thought was pretty funny over the years um his uh Grandfather was really a outstanding uh, basketball coach, baseball coach, and it, and it seemed like uh, baseball. The guy kept beating us every year, and I'm getting tired of these dodges beating me all the time. <laughs> this got to stop. So. <laughs> all right, Daniel, and. My, my um, wife, Joanne, used to always say that I was the luckiest guy because I, had, I have my family family, I have my uh, church family, I have my office family, and I have my school family. Things got rough and tough. I always could rely on somebody. And so that my office family is here tonight, uh, Blanca and Jose Medrano, please uh, write. <laughs> 
Uh, and uh, Blanca, Blanca is uh, going to take over my office. We were hoping January is probably going to be April or so, Blanca, but she, she has been with me 20, 27 years, and, um, uh, and three more years she'll be a permanent employee of mine. I have a, <laughs> I have a longer waiting period. I'm not sure if she's going to work out or not, but three more years she'll be fine. So, <laughs> so, so I just want to uh, thank everybody for the honor. Uh, we, we, um, we have an outstanding district, out, uh, really wonderful people. We have uh, gone through some really rough times together, made it, brought us back. We, we have had wonderful superintendents, um, so I've been able to work with um, Marianne Mays, uh, John Casey, um, and, uh, and uh, Dorma Baker, who uh, brought us through the last recession very, very well. And I've been honored to also work with some really outstanding people, that, people that are up on the board. Takes all of us to work together. And I just want to just point out one little thing, one more thing. The uh, EA Hall track and field that it is going to be built one of these days <laughs> happened because the Aptos board members came out to EA Hall, walked the field and said, we support this. We support this. The other night at the Aptos High School football game, I was honored to be there, and, and I said to myself, I'm just a little piece of this whole thing, but they have a beautiful school because of the, because everybody working together, and that's the whole key to it. You cannot have a board that's going to split apart, and we have to continue to work with each other, support the superintendent who is, who is just bringing in some wonderful things together, and so, once again, I just want to thank all of you very, very much for the honor. And I never had one of these before, uh, Michelle, <laughs> but uh, thank you. Uh, usually flowers or something. Is that going to grow out of this? It's going to grow. <laughs> Not flowers. <laughs> thank you. Thank all of you again. Okay. So now I'd like to recognize Leslie DeRose, who has – um, supported our district for um, 12 years, for over 12 years. I think what I always appreciated about Leslie was she brought um, a, a three, a try um, perspective to, to her um, position on the board. So she was a board member. She also works at Cabrillo College with CTE, and so she brings that richness. And then also as a parent in helping with her um, with her grandnephew now um, as he's going through our schools. So um, I appreciate all the work that she always did and our weekly meetings. So Leslie, as she was president, um, met with me every single week um, to no avail. So I always appreciated that commitment and um, always wanting to make sure that um, you were there to, to know what was happening and make sure and, and give support along the way. So thank you so much. And we have a token for you as well. So much, I appreciate it. If we, anybody, would like to make comment, brief comments. Um, so I've served on the board eight years with Leslie, um, and you were a senior member of the board, I think, when I took my seat. Um, I was always very impressed, Leslie. Even before I got on the board, I used to sit out in the audience and attend board meetings prior to my to the election. And I was just so impressed with your, your calm demeanor, your sense of integrity, and you have beautiful style. You always look like a million bucks. <laughs> you do, always. Um, you're a very impressive human being. You have a lot to offer this community. And I want to welcome you to civilian life because <laughs> I think you're, you're going to go on to do great things. And I want to thank you very much for all the hard work that we put in with um, getting Measure L passed with um, the lo the very lengthy nights sometimes discussing board business. Um, it, it's it's when you're a board member. It's um, Sam Farr um, once told me that it's it, Sam Farr and Joe Simidian both have told me personally 
that it's the hardest elected position there is. And for the new board members, I'm sorry to tell you that now. <laughs> um, it is the hardest position there is. It's, they, they've both said it, it, there's nothing harder. Not being a congressman, not being on city council, county, board of supervisors, there's nothing harder than being a school board member. And so for all of the sacrifices that you've made, for all the heart heartache and the difficult decisions that you had to make to preserve the solvency of this district, and always keeping your mind and, and your heart really on what was best for kids. Um, I just wanna say thank you because it's sort of a thankless job and um, you, did, you, you did it beautifully and we're really, really gonna miss you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll try and read faster. Congratulations. You have a, a, a lengthy proclamation here as well uh, from the city of Watsonville. And it starts out like, whereas Leslie DeRose has served the Pajaro Valley Unified School District as trustee for the Area 5 for 12 years since 2006, exceptionally representing all students, including her son Jake and daughter Becca and grandnephew Travis, staff and families, and successfully led the board as president in 2009 2012 and 2018. Or as trustee, DeRose's voice at board meetings through her 12 year tenure consistently expressed her support and appreciation for students, teachers, classified staff, administration, and her constituents, establishing a positive relationship throughout the district and community. She has maintained close ties to her community, welcoming opportunities for open communication with students, families, and uh, attending school events, community events, and other key agency events. And whereas Trustee DeRose have efficiently guided the district through the devastating $18.5 million reduction to the budget in 2008, I remember that one, in a responsible, compassionate, and sensible manner. When the budget outcomes improved, Ms. DeRose worked every day to reinstate the most beneficial programs and positions first, including arts and music intervention and relief teachers health assistance, clerical support, keeping districts financially, fiscally solvent. Whereas Trustee DeRose's commitment to students and staff has been evident through each and every negotiation session, remaining loyal to her appreciation for staff and keeping her priorities student-centered. She understands the importance of passionately uh, and passionately supports a well-rounded experience for every student that includes access to arts and music in the school's relevant college and career pathways and access to social emotional support. And whereas Trustee DeRose fervently advocates for uh, college readiness, including her participation in the establishment in 2012 of the Santa Cruz County College Commitment, the S4C, that brings together all county school districts to work together with leaders at the college level to better prepare students for transition to college. Whereas Ms. DeRose was a strong advocate of me uh, Measure L, a $150 million bond, uh, purpose to meet the need of aging and deter deteriorating facilities, ensuring adequate citizen oversight and consistent reporting to the board. She was a strong supporter of the completion of Pajaro Valley High School and relayed the sense of urgency in finalizing the high school to ensure a full experience for, for PBHS students. And whereas Trustee DeRose is a founding board member of the Pajaro Valley Educational Foundation and is currently secretary for the Pajaro Valley Prevention and Student Assistance. Uh, through her involvement in the district and community, committees such as PV, USD trustee representatives, including intergovernmental Pajaro Valley Prevention and Student Assistance, arts, site and facilities committees, she's ensured that PVUSD students best interests are at the center of all decisions. Whereas Mr. Rose has been a firm advocate of positive discipline through preventative and in intervention services, reducing student expulsion and suspension rates and offering access to alternative in-school learning and enrichment opportunities. Recognizing bullying as a matter that negatively impacts a student's experience, Mr. Rose has diligently supported schools anti-bullying guidelines that offer students both physical and emotional safety. And whereas Leslie DeRose worked closely with Superintendent Dr. Michelle Rodriguez in developing a plan to effectively address con uh, con 
attacks from immigration officials, thereby ensuring the safety and protection of our most vulnerable students and family rights. Whereas Trustee DeRosa's productive work on the PVUSD board earned her the Woman of the Year Award from the Aptos Chamber of Commerce in 2011. She dedicated endless hours to ensure understanding of items brought before the board, thereby making informed decisions that kept her commitment to students and staff at the center. And for this, she is commended. Now, therefore, I, Lowell Hurst, former mayor of the city of Watsonville in the state of California, do hereby commend Leslie Rose DeRose for her many accomplishments and wish her much success in all future endeavors. Congratulations. Is it my turn? Okay, thank you. That was really meaningful, thank you very much. Um, so this is kind of bittersweet. <laughs> Obviously, um, I didn't want to be leaving the board, but um, as I uh, reflect on what's next, I'm very excited about spending more time with my family, um, who's been very, very supportive um, through my life, but especially in the last 12 years. So I want to thank my sister, Greer, and Travis, my grandnephew, who uh, is getting famous tonight, I think. <laughs> so um, they've both been a tremendous support and I really um, am proud of the work that I have done along with other board members and I feel like I'm leaving this district better off than when I came so um, I'll carry that with me and I just want to say to the new trustees um, congratulations um, there are going to be times that as you heard are going to be really tough but there's going to be times that are going to be really really wonderful as well um, the opportunities for debate with other board members that um, there may be disagreements, um, that debate is, can be very, very healthy and it's um, meant for you to come to a decision that, that to consensus on what's best for kids. So um, embrace it. I've actually, I've, I've enjoyed it. It's been great working with, um, with people of differing opinions. It's eye-opening. And I, I believe that um, uh, it just adds something to each of us uh, because we've listened to each other and um, learned from each other and uh, sometimes changed our minds because of what we're hearing. And I think that's important and I think that's, that was our job and I think that we did, um, we did it well. So I'm gonna miss everybody and I just wanna say thank you to everybody, student, staff, administration, um, our community partners, our city, um, everybody that I've worked with on committees um, for the better of the community as a whole. So thank you very, very much. So next I get to honor Jeff Fersino, who has um, been on the board for eight years and is um, extremely active in the community. I think one thing I always appreciate about Jeff is people definitely think that he is a good listener or know he is a good listener because he frequently brings to me parent concerns. So parents, community members know that they can go to him, they feel comfortable enough to say um, their concerns and know that he'll listen without judgment and then also act upon it. Um, and so I always appreciate about that. Um, also, he always, um, a lot of times, makes us smile um, with his wit um, because he'll, um, he'll take credit for um, the best um, performing elementary school and say that it's all him. <laughs> My kids, actually. It's yeah, kids. sorry. Um, so we, we thank so much, Jeff, for all that you have done for us, and um, we hope that we continue to um, get, get your support through the um, PB Education Foundation. So thank you. So Jeff, I just want to say it's been um, it's been great working with you. I think that um, you and I probably had the most differing opinions on this board. 
and it's been probably um, one of the best relationships that I've had on the board over the last 12 years. Y I think you know how much I respect you, okay. and um, res respect the fact that you know you are very open to other opinions. Um, as what I was talking about before, you're you're the one that really comes to mind. And I think that we developed a really, really good working relationship, and we did some great work together, and you'll be missed. Are you saying you enjoy arguing with me? Is yes, that very much. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you Leslie, very much. Up, right back at you. Jeffrey. <laughs> Just wait. I am really going to miss you as my um, partner for the um, AFTA school. Um, I'm choking up a little bit. When Jeff and I first took our seats, um, the representation for North Zone, w while we had wonderful um, board members who preceded us, um, for some political reasons and some funding reasons, the Aptos schools really didn't get their fair share of funding at all. And so Jeff and I set forward to rectify that, and we had a wonderful CBO at the time um, who helped us do that along with the superintendents. And um, I can say today that the work that we did together provided computer and network access to the Aptos schools where there was none before we started. So um, for that and for a million other things, including your fantastic sense of humor that you just let loose at the perfect time to sort of you know, k k bring a lighter note to difficult conversations. I'm really, really going to miss you, and I wish you all the best. I I know that you're destined for bigger and better things too, and um, you have you always have my support. Thank you. Yeah. I may call you on that. Yeah. yeah. And I just want to say one last thing, Jeff, is that I one of the things I really appreciate actually about all three of you board members is that you show up, and you don't leave when the going gets tough. You're you are always here at the meetings. You're always here for closed session. And you're always here late in the night, you know, sometimes until midnight when we have really important district business to do. So anyway, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. thank you. Can I say a few words? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Here we go. Whereas, another proclamation. Whereas Jeffrey Asino served the Powell Valley Unified School District community as a trustee for areas seven for eight years since 2010, representing all students, including his wife Jennifer, who is a PBUSD teacher, staff, families, and lead and uh, lead as the board president in 2015. Whereas Trustee Orsino's voice at board meetings through his eight-year tenure consistently expressed his support and appreciation for students teachers, classified staff, administration, and his constituents establishing positive relationships throughout the district and community. He has maintained close ties to his community, welcoming opportunities for open communication with students and families, attending school events, community events, and other key agency events. And whereas Trustee uh, Ursino prudently and sensibly guided administration through the devastating $18.5 million budget reduction in 2008, carefully reviewing finances in the best way to protect the district from unexpected financial downfalls. In challenging and healthy uh, economic times, he has commended the work of teachers, classified staff, administrators, students as they helped, uh, as they adapted to the ever-changing learning environments and continued to deliver key services and programs to students. Uh, Trustee Ursino's commitment to students and staff has been evident through each and every negotiation session, remaining loyal to maintaining a, a healthy district budget that reflected his appreciation for staff and student center priorities. And whereas Trustee Ursino admirably advocated for parent involvement, expressing his appreciation for parents' participation in school events, for their engagement with the students, uh, teachers, staff, and administration, highlighting the positive impact that a involved parent can contribute to their child and the teacher and the district and Mr. Sino was a strong advocate of measure L a 150 million dollar bond purpose to meet the needs of aging and deteriorating facilities public uh, publicly sharing uh, publicly sharing the f uh, that funds would support 
upgrades to classroom libraries, science labs, and computer systems to keep pace with technology and the 21st century skills. Whereas Trustee Ursino understands the importance and the passionately supports a well-rounded experience for every student that includes access to arts, music in the schools, relevant college and career pathways, and access to social emotional support. Whereas through his involvement in district and community committee, uh, committees as a PVSD trustee representative, including intergovernmental and art and the arts committees, Mr. Ursino ensured that PVUSD students' best interests were at the center of all decisions. Whereas Mr. Ursino has been a firm advocate for positive discipline through prevention and intervention services, reducing student ex expulsion and suspension rates, and offering access to alternative in-school learning and enrichment opportunities, recognizing bullying as a matter that negatively impacts a student's experience, Mr. Ursino also supported having guidelines in place to create a positive school environment for both physical and emotional safety. Whereas Trustee Ursino worked closely with Superintendent Dr. Michelle Rodriguez in developing a plan to ensure the safety and protection of our most vulnerable students and family rights. And whereas Trustee Ursino dedicated endless hours to ensuring understanding of items brought before the board, thereby making informed decisions that kept his commitment to students and staff at the center, and for this he is commended. Now, therefore, I, Lowell Hurst, former mayor of the city of Watsonville in the state of California, do hereby commend Jeffrey Ursino for his many accomplishments and wish him success in his further future endeavors. Congratulations and commendations. This will probably be the last time Paco and I are invited back uh, since we've sucked up the, the whole evening. But we wanted to uh, share that partnership with you, and we want to continue that partnership, and we're going to march forward together. And I always thank uh, this board and every board for their uh, support of uh, my education. You know, if I hadn't have been a teacher here and, and uh, the, the advocacy of the Pajaro Valley Federation of Teachers and the support that the district has uh, provided me, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. And that's retired. Thank you very much. I too would just like to echo uh, what uh, Lowell just said, and I want to thank each of you, all the teachers that are here. Um, I'm a product of the school district, so all of your work uh, has paid off. So keep up the great work. So, so, so lastly, lastly, we always recognize um, our out. I can do it in three minutes. You know, this is my last time at this microphone after eight years, and so I, I wanted to say a few words about, um, I want to say a few thank yous, really. I, I, first, I want to thank the administrators, the teachers, and the trustees. It is a lot of work to educate the youth of this community. And I have seen firsthand each and every one of you throughout the district working hard to make sure that gets done. So as a parent of three kids who, are move, who have moved through the district, as the, wife, as the husband of a teacher at Rio, and as a trustee, I say thank you so much. I, words do not, cannot express my appreciation, so thank you very much. I also want to say thank you to the constituents. As I was telling Jennifer, my replacement, um, I have been stopped at the grocery store. I've been stopped in church, Little League, at the gas station with people concerned, wanting to talk about what's going on in the district. And I've appreciated each and every one of them because what that tells me is, good, bad, or indifferent, they care. If you want to know what makes a great community, it's people who care. And so I really want to thank the constituents of Aptos and really of the entire community for what they've done, for blessing me with this opportunity and for trusting me. I hope I lived up to their um, expectations. I want to thank my wife and kids. Being a trustee is a three or four night a week job. And my family has never complained. They've just said, we'll see you tonight. We'll try to wait up for you. And I, my wife is home right now with my son who has a fever. I appreciate that so much. So if you're watching, I appreciate it. Thank you. And finally, I really want to say congratulations to the incoming board members. I am so 
excited about where this district, is, this district is going. There are some big things coming our way, and I really do feel that we have the bench strength at this table and at our schools to really make some positive change. Congratulations to all of you. We're all rooting for you. Uh, best of luck. Thank you. So we do have a speaker to this item, so I'm going to be calling up um, Greer Barnes. I'm not going to take a lot of time because <laughs> pretty much everything I was going to say about all the outgoing uh, trustees, um, the wonderful city folks have, have said it all with the proclamations, um, and so I appreciate that. But I just want to let you know um, that I appreciate my sister's strength through these last 12 years. Um, really speaking up to the subjects that mean the most to her, which is student achievement, um, making sure that every student has an opportunity to be their best, whatever that might be at, whether it's college or um, career. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm blown away by what she has accomplished. And I'm really looking forward to continuing that. Um, she and I are both, you know, constituents now, and we're looking forward to seeing the, the um, district grow and continue with the programs that she started and helped start um, uh, just making sure that um, the incoming trustees uh, focus on what's best for the students um, listen to all sides um, when they are making decisions pay attention uh, most importantly and um, you know just make sure that you're balancing your your decisions um, looking at each uh, Side, whether it's the employees of the district or the students um, or the constituents you know the taxpayers money you know you have to um, handle that with kid gloves sometimes so um, just you know take uh, take Leslie's advice she's been a really great um, uh, leader and I think you can learn a lot from her so thank you Leslie Looking forward to a couple more Wednesday nights together. <laughs> so, so we do have multiple speakers to this item. So we have Ariel Benson, followed by Sarah Henne. Hi, good evening. How many minutes do I have? Oh my God, oh, okay. Willie, as a, um, a resident of Area 4, I wanna say that your commitment to the district is remarkable. Every year I feel like I'm in Groundhog Day when I go to vote, I'm like, what? Again, how, you are just, you have so much stamina. It's really amazing and I wish you the best of luck in what is obviously a new phase in your life. So thank you for being a pillar in our community and I know I'll see you around because you're out and about. <laughs> And then I, I wanted to say um, also hi to the new assistant superintendent. I didn't make it to your breakfast, but I look forward to meeting you personally. Susan can tell you everything about me. <laughs> um, but welcome, welcome. Um, I wanted to say to the incoming trustees that I was very impressed with what I heard at the, the forum, and I'm very happy that you made it this far and look forward to working with you as a teacher and community member. I really appreciate the time that obviously they've all spoken to, it takes, and I can see that it is quite a thankless job at times. I know we teachers have a way of giving you a hard time when we need to, but I want you to know that we really appreciate your hard work. It's, it's, and I just hope that, um, and I know that you will do your best to take care of our students, their families, and employees. So good luck. Good evening. Everybody, please take care of my child who's running around. She's, she's on the loose. So I want to say thank you. Um, you worked hard to be in a position that is really thankless in a lot of ways. Um, there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes that we don't know about. And I've never, I've been up here during tough times with all of you, but I've never questioned your dedication and your love for our families and our students, that is clear. And uh, Leslie, I know we often haven't agreed in our positions, but 
I can tell how much you value um, the voices of the teachers and the families, and you've always tried to do the best given the information that you have, and I don't doubt that um, you will take that wherever you go from now on and be an advocate in the way that you uh, feel is the best, so thank you. Um, Willie, you are so loved in this community, and we also have not agreed. <laughs> um, but, you know, my parents were, have been sick. My dad's still around, but my, my mom passed away about a year and a half ago. And I know you found out somehow, and you came up to me at a board meeting, and you said, I'm really sorry to hear about your, you know, your mom being sick. Actually, it was before she passed away. And you offered to drive me to Bakersfield. You, you did that for me. <laughs> and I know you because I stand at the podium and tell you what we want you to do. <laughs> you know, and you, you reached out to me, you made an effort, and I really appreciated that. It was really personal. And so I can see why the community really values who you are. So thank you. And the first, the first thing that I found out about Jeff was that we both had a love of the band The Smiths. And I was like, hmm, maybe this guy's okay. Um, and then I was like, well, maybe, no, no, he's good, he's good. <laughs> um, and, you know, we also have not always agreed, but I feel like you are sometimes a surprise, um, and in a good way. And you're an independent thinker, and I appreciate that. And some of my best uh, memories of Jeff are when he um, worked next to the building that our union office was in, and he would come in. He said he came in to chat, but I think it was like there was a little spy spying going on. I'm not sure. Uh, what do we have on the walls? What are we scheming to do in the union office? But it was nice to chat with you and, and try to make that connection. And I think we did. And so I really appreciate, and, I, and Risa's not here, I'm surprised. I mean, you know, she's the one who should be up here saying thanks for listening. Right, Risa? Where are you? Um, but anyway, I just want to say thank you and I appreciate all of your service. And I'm really excited about the incoming group. Um, I have a lot of hope. And um, you, I just want you all to know that the teachers are your natural allies. And we want to share um, the responsibility with you of moving forward in the most positive and productive way. So thank you. All right, so we have a couple more speakers. We have Laura Sucker followed by Nelly Vaquera, Sonia Quintero, and Manuel Serrano. Um, yeah, I, thought we're speaking, I thought we're speaking under 2.7, but now we changed it. Okay, um, you know, um, we said a lot of things about um, appreciating people who are on the board, and we do appreciate your work here. And also, when you've been gracious, you know, I was telling Jeff, I appreciate he was always very gracious, and um, which was nice because we haven't always agreed. Um, I was just what I was going to say is, we're really happy to have another new board to have three new people on the board. That'll be exciting. And I learned something when we were walking a lot of precincts. We went to a lot of doors, um, and we had a lot of nice conversations with people in the community, family members, and parents. And the one thing that people always said is that they wanted the resources to go to the classroom. They were really supportive of us as teachers. It's really gratifying to walk around Watsonville because no one, frankly, is saying teachers are overpaid. We don't hear that. And you know, the first thing I always opened it with when we knocked on the door, one of the things I wanted to say was, you know, we just got a raise, but our classified um, cannot afford to live here, our classified brothers and sisters. And we think that we can do better on that. So it was, it was really great to go and meet so many people and to have them, and to talk to them about these issues and have them <sighs> say what they wanted from this board and what they won and why they voted for the people they voted for is they wanted the candidates who were saying, hey, we're gonna do everything we can to put the resources in the classroom to support the kids. We're gonna do everything we can to be democratic to listen to what the parents in the community want, which, as I just said, is more, <laughs> is the money going to the classroom. Um, we're gonna do everything we can. We want, um, the we want candidates who are gonna be, you know, we're gonna be, want a board that's gonna be transparent. 
and tell us how the money is being spent and ask questions of the community. And that's what these, our new candidates ran on. And I just look, really look forward to a time when, you know, so some, a process whereby the community and the parents and the teachers and all the staff um, is listened to and that we try really, really hard to have a democratic, uh, well-functioning district where the kids, the students are the absolute priority because that is what we ho heard overwhelmingly during the election campaign. So have fun, you guys. It'll be fun to work it out. Thank you very much. So just to clarify, so the last three names I called, is it for item 2.7 or is it for the current item? Um, I don't know. I'm just coming so up here to talk. Nelly, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'm Nelly Vaquera Boggs. I am a classroom teacher, but I'm also the chief negotiator for PBFT. And um, so thank you for like having me come up here. And thank you for the service that you put in for all the years that you were sitting on the board. I raised my children in the area for. Um, district or area four here in Watsonville. And so I have two children who have gone through our school and I've also worked in area four schools. So thank you for being representatives and welcome to our new um, trustees coming in. And I hope that as we move forward into in negotiations that we are all able to ask questions and there be transparency and there be an understanding that in order to staff a school with teachers, we also need to make sure that our teachers can afford to live here. So yeah, it's, it's a, a lot of times it is about money, but it's always ultimately about our students um, because we are all connected to our students and um, we see that their lives and their futures are important because I know that my children are my future, so <laughs> I want to make sure that they receive the best education that they can, their foundational skills. So thank you. All right. Hi. Um, my name is Manuel Serrano. I'm the site supervisor for the Braille State Preschool, and also I'm the uh, junior rep from the Early Childhood Educators. And I totally understand everybody that the democratic process because I remember when my co-workers, they vote for me, 27 of them, they vote for me to become the rep. And it's not easy, it's no fun sometimes, but here I am and I'm so happy that we live in a yeah. wonderful democratic uh, society. But um, I want to uh, give you the face. I'm the teacher also for the classroom in, in uh, Bradley and I, I teach every day to 44 students and uh, had the streams, um, a student from Sweden, from Sweden, um, the students that they are homeless and everything between. And I'm very happy that the also we have four students that they are having services in the Duncan Holbert and um, early intervention, I think it's something wonderful. But I want to say this because you guys, thank you so much because all the services the that we provide, we give to, to the communities because everybody here in this room, teachers, um, board members, superintendent, everybody, thank you so much. And also I want to say thank you so much for the support for the Early Childhood ed uh, Education mm -hmm. Department. My director is here, Kathy Latrop, and she's always doing some incredible stuff and giving us more and more tools to be able to to work with our students. And thank you so much, and I really appreciate that. And, and I hope my coworkers are happy about what I say because I didn't prepare anything. I'm thinking in Spanish and I tend to speak in English and it's not easy. <laughs> but thank you so much, okay? Thank you. Hi, my name is Sonia Quintero. I'm never really spoke here before, but um, I just wanted to thank all of you for all your years of service of here, working here with the community. But mm -hmm. I work at Calabasas School. I'm a teacher, I'm a new union rep. Mm -hmm. And um, I just wanted to let you know that my kids have gone here through all this, all the different schools here, Minty White, um, um, Aptos High, and, oh, sorry. But I just wanted to thank you for all your years of service and working here in the community. I know it's not 
hasn't always been easy. And um, the decisions that you make are really hard. But we all, I think, are in this together about, you know, thinking about the children because this is our main goal is working with the children, for the children, supporting them. I do also want to welcome the new trustees that are going to be coming in because they are going to have a big job and we are all going to try to just come together and just think about what our main goal is. And, um, and looking forward to their future input to see if we could all make these decisions that will benefit our students. And thank you very much for your commitment and I wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you. So lastly, um, we always um, provide a little token of appreciation to also our outgoing president and vice president. So president has already been taken care of. So I want to thank um, Maria for being a, a, our great vice president and, um, and always um, ensuring that um, we are listening to all perspectives. So she as well, when we meet, um, has at least three or four parent concerns that she talks to me about and make sure that um, we're following up with our constituents and, um, and doing what's best for students. So thank you, Maria. So now we are going to be moving to item um, 2.2 in our agenda, which is the swearing in of our newly elected and appointed members to the board. Um, so with that, I will be asking um, our outgoing board members uh, to take a seat. Um, and um, our three uh, newly elected members of the board, Daniel Dodge Jr., and Jennifer Holm, um, and Jennifer Shocker. Uh, will be sworn in by Judge Kim Basket. If one of the new member wishes to select someone else to swear them in, John Basket will swear in the selected person who will in turn swear in the new board member. And, and so with that, I wanna welcome all the new elected board members up here to the podium uh, for the swearing in ceremony. I think after. three-time mayor of Watsonville, actually, and, and so uh, Jennifer has asked me to swear her in. So, please. Jennifer, Jennifer Shocker. Am I doing this right? You know, uh, someone asked me if I had a robe, and I did check in the uh, bathroom, and I did have one, but I wasn't going to wear it here. Thank you very much. Uh, re uh, please raise your uh, right hand and repeat after me. I, Jennifer Shocker, do solemnly swear that I will defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. And I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties that am I about to enter. You've been duly sworn in. So we did forget to mention Kim, uh, but she was appointed in lieu of an election um, this time around.
Also, I'm going to be swearing in Kimberly De Deserpa. De and so, uh, Kimberly Deserpa is a friend of my colleague, Judge Guy. I'm honored to be swearing you in. I didn't know I was going to be swearing you in. I'm going to swear you in first, and this woman going to ask you to raise your right hand and be swore in, sworn in. Repeat after me. I, Jennifer Holm. I, Jennifer Holm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will defend the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the, con and the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without men any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. The duties upon which I am about to enter. Now, <laughs> this is not the formal certificate, so you need to pay attention to the young woman who spoke to me. That yeah. woman. Yeah. She's going to make arrangements mm -hmm. to get me to sign right. the original certificate. So it will be signed by a Superior Court judge. Thank My pleasure. You. My pleasure. I, Kimberly DeSerpa, do solemnly swear or affirm, do solemnly swear or affirm, that I will defend the Constitution of the United States, that I will defend the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California, and the Constitution of the State of California, against all enemies, against all enemies, foreign or domestic, foreign or domestic, and that I will bear true faith and allegiance, and that I will bear true faith and allegiance, to the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties upon which I am about to enter. The duties upon which I am about to enter. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to sign this because they just gave it to me. You'll have it temporarily, but then you get the permanent one. Okay. All right. Take care. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. So with that, welcome um, new elected board members. You get to take your seat. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, we I'm so sorry, Danny. Dodge, repeat after me. Raise your right hand. I, Daniel Dodge, Jr. I, Daniel Dodge, Jr. Do solemnly swear and affirm. Do solemnly swear and affirm. That I will defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will defend the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear truth, faith, and allegiance. That I will To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. I take this obligation freely. I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will will well and faithfully I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. So you are sworn in. <laughs> so now I want to invite all new board members um, to come and take your seat, please.
Okay, moving right along. Have everyone up here? Okay. So item um, 2.3, election of officers of the board. At this time, uh, we are going to start with the president position. So I wanted to open up to anyone who's interested in, in the president position. So first, um, Danny, so that we know that um, how it runs, right? So first, we asked any board member interested to show interest. Then we allow that, um, that board member to provide a statement. And then after we do that, uh, we ask for nominations. Okay? Karen? Uh, I'm interested. I've been on the board 14 years, and I actually have never been president. <laughs> um, I have been very active, active, active board members. I'm on many parent committees. I've been on... I, and I've been on the same parent committees for 14 years because once I'm on them, I'm dedicated to the committee. Um, I, um, you know, I want to be able to provide new things for the school district. I mean, I'm working on <laughs> trying to get our buses um, running, if I can, with alcohol, and I'm trying to get to see if we can have all of our schools be solar. Um, and I'm... Um, I've worked on lots of other things with the school board. Um, so after all these years, <laughs> I'm thinking um, that it might be good for me because um, I don't know how much longer I will be on the school board because um, when I'm um, ready to run again, I'll be here 16 years <laughs> and hmm, to figure out whether I'm going to go ahead and run again. But um, I've loved working with all the teachers, and I've loved, loved working with all the students that I have. I, I've come and done readings with students in their classrooms um, many, many years. Um, and I have always been supported by the teachers. I think the teachers think I'm a pretty good board member, pretty sure about that. <laughs> and um, so I'm now going to see if it's a possibility to be president, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, so I also would like to express my interest in the position as a successful product of our local public schools and now a PBUSD uh, parent to a student. I have a devoted interest in ensuring the safety, the well-being, and academic success of every student in the Paro Valley Unified School District. As a board trustee, I have supported policies that have increased academic readiness, emotional support, and counselors at our school sites promoted parent involvement through the broadcasting of our board meetings, their participation on, on our LCAP process, and the hiring of our superintendent. That had never been done in the past, and we took that in to ensure that their voice was present in the hiring process of our new superintendent. I have also advocated for the safer students and staff in collaboration with PVFT by adopting a resolution calling to increase the health protective zones around schools where hazardous pesticides are applied and banning Roundup from our school sites. In addition to our anti-bullying campaign, our resolution and revisions um, to our bullying policies at the school site level. I have also supported salary increases, proper resources, and professional development to not only retain, but attract the most qualified teachers and staff to help our students succeed. And more recently, I actively participated in the development of our three-year readiness roadmap to improve systems, practice, and policies in PVUSD, which will support reaching our goal of all students being college and career ready. With your support, um, I hope we as a team can continue to move our, our district forward. If selected as your board president, my priorities will include running efficient and effective meetings, Continue to focus on early academic readiness by exploring um, full day kinder where possible. Addressing the concern over how long it takes for IOP, our IEPs currently to be reviewed and processed. Incre increasing parent involvement um, through student-led conferences, workforce housing, and teacherships to cover classroom materials. 
expanding future project collaborations with the City of Watsonville and our Santa Cruz County Board of Supervisors. Actively participate in our first ever Labor Management Institute. Um, and, and one of the things I really wanna highlight is to host um, a board retreat where we as a board um, can determine our board priorities, our guidelines and protocols. And so tonight I am asking for the board support um, for the president position. And so with that, I will now open up four nom nominations. Then followed by Danny. I would like to nominate Karen Osmussen for president. Um, I think I was speaking first. There's an order. Um, I'd like to nominate Ms. Maria Orozco um, for the presidency. Um, I'll just leave it there for now, but I have, I have other comments. Okay, so now we're gonna call it for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you. So now moving on to um, the vice president position. Again, I am opening it it up for the board members to show their interest. I in think the you need to call a roll call on that because I think there was some confusion and I did not hear Osmondson throw a vote for you. Please so please do a roll call. Okay. And roll call please call, be please. explicit that you're calling for the nomination the for yourself. Correct. Not, okay. So can you acting president? Can you please state? Yes. Yeah, so okay. So let's do this again. So we have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, now can we do a roll call vote, please? And this is on, on the vote for Maria, for, Orozco. for Maria Orozco. Just yes. to clarify. Okay, I'm gonna try to be present for my vote. Oh. Trustee Daniel Dodge, your vote? No. Trustee Acosta? No. Trustee Osmondson? Um, no. Can you repeat, please? Trustee um, DeSerpa? Yes. Trustee Shocker? No. Trustee Orozco? Yes. Trustee Holm? Yes. Okay, motion dies. So now we're gonna bring it back for a vote for Karen Osmondson. So roll call please. No, I think I there was a first, so. There was a first? Yeah. I second. I second, okay. And now roll call please. Trustee Dodger vote? Yes. For Karen Osmondson. Trustee Acosta? Aye. Trustee Osmondson? Yes. Trustee DeSerpa? Um, Karen, with all due respect, I'm gonna have to abstain from this vote. Um, information was brought to the district that there's been a Brown Act violation of the three new board members, yourself and Trustee Acosta, meeting together to discuss board business, including this election. And uh, regretfully, I will be abstaining uh, from this vote. Trustee um, Shocker? I vote yes. Trustee Orozco? I'll abstain. Trustee Holm? No. None of okay. us. Neither of us. No, Karen. Karen. So um, Karen has Three. the four votes um, that she needs. So congr congratulations, Karen. Um, you are now the president of the PVUSD board. Okay, so now moving on to uh, the next position. I think you need to pass the gavel. Oh, I'm sorry. You wanna come on over or do you want me just to pass you the gavel? Oh. Okay, now we're gonna do nominations for vice president. I'd like to nominate Danny Dodge. Oh, Danny Dodge. Is the, is the process, the board policy process that you need to follow to vote for Danny Dodge? So you need to ask anybody if they wanna. Nominate. Themselves. 
they want to present. Oh, they so, so if they're so interested in the, the position, you just go ahead and ask them to voice their interest in the position. Yeah. So if there's any people who are interested, if you want to talk about your interest. Yes. You need to speak in the microphone. Can you pick up if you want to volunteer, volunteer, if you will, be in the position of vice president, you can um, talk about your interest. Are, are you are you going to express your interest? Uh, I'm not going to express my interest. Okay. Wait for nominations. Okay. 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 So I am interested in the vice president position for the aforementioned reasons. Go ahead. I already yeah, went through my <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you did, you did that, so yeah. I don't have to do it again. Yeah. So everyone, um, I think, heard my stance on what I want to do and get accomplished. And I think overall, Karen and I would make an excellent team in continuing the, the right direction, the forward direction of the district. Okay, so, um, so, nom uh, so we'll, we'll nominate. There's a nomination. Yeah, you have a nomination on the floor. So there's a nomination on the floor already. Correct, and now you need a second. I'll second it. Do the roll call. Roll call. Roll call for Vice President, Doc, um, Trustee Dodge. Yes. yes. Trustee Acosta. Yes. President Osmondson. Yes. Trustee De Serpa. Uh, Vice President Maria. for Maria. That was a nomination on the floor for Daniel Dodge by Shocker. Oh, it was seconded by me. That's so the nomination is for okay, I'm sorry, then Daniel I'm Dodge as vice chair. Okay. But, no, but he said so no, confused. he didn't want to speak. No, he didn't. He said he didn't want to speak. Oh, don't don't speak said. for him, Georgia. Oh, you said you didn't want to speak, but you I'm sitting here. I can hear him. I just didn't want to speak. I just said so much. Oh, he said, oh. I didn't know about that. Oh, he didn't want to speak. I don't think you all heard him. I'm sitting right next to him, so I'm not speaking on his behalf. I heard him. He said that he didn't want to speak. He wanted to move it to the nominations. Shocker had already made the nomination. I have seconded it. He has voted yes for himself, I believe. Yes. I am voted yes for Daniel Dodge as vice chair of this governing board. I'll I'll call the vote again for um, Vice Chair for um, Daniel Dodge. Oh no. Trustee Dodge. Yes. Oh my God. Trustee Acosta. Yes. President Osmondson. Oh no. Daniel, I'm not kidding. That's who the vote is for, Jay, right now. We're voting for, for Daniel. Daniel. We're voting for Daniel. Can vote right yes now. or no. Yeah. Oh God, I don't know what to do. I voted for Maria already. <laughs> Um, there has been no vote for Maria. There's not a nomination on the floor for her yet. Okay. Um, oh, Danny. Mm, Danny's such a good friend of mine. Okay, yes. Trustee DeSerpa? I'm abstaining for um, the reasons that I mentioned earlier. Trustee Shocker? Yes. Trustee Orozco? I'll be abstaining. Trustee Holm? No. Well, there's, so it, passed it passed, to correct. Um, it passed forward for, for okay. okay. Congratulations, Daniel. Madam, Madam Chair, Madam Chair, I had turned in a card earlier and I wanted to speak to the incoming, before you go to break, may I speak? And there's a card I turned in before you go to the, in, to the break. Sure, Thank you. Daniel. Okay. Deep breath, everybody. <sighs> All right, good evening. Uh, I wanted to take a moment um, because I have to take my granddaughter home, and it is a school night, and uh, I wanted to be able to uh, 
um, address the board here at the Par Valley Unified School District. Um, my name is Daniel Dodge Sr. and I wanted to speak as, um, as a proud father this evening. Um, I'm really proud of you, son. I'm proud for our family. I'm proud for our people. I'm proud for our community. And I'm so honored that my granddaughter here is present to be able to see you being sworn in because Creator's blessed us for her, her to witness me being sworn in as mayor and city councilman and for you as a school board member. I'm really excited about that, you know. Um, I know you've been precinct walking since you were a child. I'd tell everybody, but then I'd have to report how young you really were and you weren't in <laughs> school and everything like that. And um, for the UFW marches, we, your grandfather uh, was very active in the UFW and I know that he'd be very proud if he was here. Um, you know, we're a dysfunctional family, seeing as my father was a teacher and it's generational like that. <laughs> Um, I can't thank you enough for helping you on my campaign and the campaign of several elected officials all the way from San Francisco to Salinas. And I'm really proud that we've gone to district elections because there was a time that this board, that the Chicano Mexican American community had no access to this board of trustees. So we went to district elections, now this is the product of all of it. So I want to thank my good friend uh, Joaquin Avila for uh, being part and allowing me to be part of that district election switch. And uh, as Joaquin said, you know, um, he opened the door for both of us to be able to have this accessibility in this role. I want to thank my brothers and sisters in the labor movement, the union, the California Federation of Teachers. <laughs> because as labor, you know, Democrats endorse candidates, labor, we, we elect them. And we did all the work that was necessary to be able to elect this new board, um, and I'm really excited to see that. Um, I, I wish you all the best of luck. I want you to be, uh, I would ask that you be more accessible to the community and not let these meetings run till midnight, one o'clock in the morning when somebody who works is not able to be able to come and to address this podium and to this microphone. Um, I want to thank, thank Maria for all the years of service that she's been giving us and continues to give us. She was the youngest elected official in the county when she was first elected to this office, and I still believe she's one of the youngest, uh, although I don't know. <laughs> and Karen, good luck to you, Karen. You supported me way back then <laughs> in the, in the cannery workers' strike, and we were members of the Teamsters of the Democratic Union. I and uh, it's really an honor to be able to see you actually have the opportunity to do this role. And um, good luck to you. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, stay strong, stay healthy, and... Um, I just wanted to say those kind of things. Si se puede. Si se puede. We are going to a break. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, so thank you very much. So we have attached for the board review, we have the proposed 2019, um, 2019 board meeting schedule. Um, it does follow very much the same format that we had for the 2018. Um, we did try to already include um, two of the special board study sessions that we had used last year. Um, in an effort to try to ensure that um, all board members were able to see um, those special board study sessions ahead of time. You'll see that there are some variations that we had last year as well that coincide with the with the school schedule. So for, in, for instance, in January, um, we skip um, one of our meetings and we have the 23rd. Um, I do want to mention um, there are two board study sessions that are noted. One is the April board study session. There had been a request that we do a K-12 academic data board study session last year um, so that we could really dive into all of the data. And then also um, we have done for the last two years a special board meeting closed session regarding my evaluation as closed session because it's only an hour generally doesn't give us enough time for me to do the presentation. So I bring it to the board for your um, approval and recommendations. I have a question. On the April 10th one, you say it's a study session, K-12 academic. Is that a special study session? Yes, that would be on the April 10th. We actually only have, normally have one in April. So it would put a second meeting in April. We try to put our special board study sessions on months where we only have one board meeting. Since it's just a draft, could you just add the word special study session, special in front of that? Certainly. Thank you. So I'll make a motion to approve it with the amendment of the April 10th board meeting having the word special added in front of the word study. I'd second it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 No opposition, I don't think. Right? <laughs> All right. It's approved. Okay, and now we're going to talk about our community committees. And I'm just saying I'm hoping everyone is it I'm just saying I'm hoping everyone is in at least one committee. That's what I'd like. <laughs> and Michelle. All right, thank you very much. So this past week we provided you with the Excel that is also attached so that you would be able to see how often, with what frequency that the board meet, uh, the community meetings meet, and also the proposed dates. I would like to ask that we add a number 13, which is the um, which is the adult education. So um, we do not have that on there, but it is a committee in which we do have board representation, and so we are asking that that also be considered as a formal committee. And that's the that's the adult education, education advisory advisory committee. Mm -hmm. 
which is not every month. No, they meet three times a year. Three times a year. They meet three times a year. Mm -hmm. So, if, can I? Mm -hmm. Um, so, if I may, I would like to express my interest in serving in the DLAC committee, the Intergovernmental um, Committee, and also the Pajaro Valley Education Foundation Committee. Jen. Um, I would like to express my interest in the SELPA Committee, Intergovernmental Inspector. Jennifer Sock Shocked. Yeah, the other Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to express my interest in the intergovernmental and the adult education. Okay. I'd like to express my interest in the Migrant Head Start Committee. In Georgia? Um, I will express my interest in the CTE Advisory Board and the Intergovernmental Relations Committee. So how, how many are on the intergovernmental? Just make, want to make sure about that. that, that you are by default. Four, so we would, we would need to um, reduce one. Yeah, so. Well, we, you are by default as president. No, I don't think I'm. Am, am I by default on it? No, I don't um, think so. You don't have to be. I mean, I, I was going to say maybe this time I'm never usually on it. I would be interested in this time, but that would be five. That wouldn't, that wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah. So, so does anybody want to be on another committee and not the intergovernmental committee? <laughs> anybody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, you know, Maria, you've been on it in the past, so maybe you and I could, you know, remove ourselves from that and pass the baton on to some of our new board members. I think we have um, good momentum going, and so I still would like to express my interest in serving in that committee. So, uh, oh, are you on it, Jen, too? Jen Holmes? I expressed my interest, but. So, who, so who is interested? It's one, two, three, and I think four. So four, current, four so current, we have um, Maria, Jennifer Holm, Jennifer Shocker, and um, Georgia at this point, which is four, and we can only have three. <laughs> well, considering some things that are going, and I don't know how much about the good momentum has really gone on because this meeting hasn't met regularly in the past two years, but I would still be willing to step back from it and I would suggest that we let one of our new people be in it and I would, considering that some of the um, developments that the City of Watsonville is looking at and that they directly affect uh, Trustee Shocker's area, I would suggest that she would be a same fit to cover the interest of those constituents in that area. So I'll remove myself if um, Holm or Osmondson, one of them, would well, remove themselves as well, let Shocker. Well, y you three can, be, I mean, I, mean I, I don't have to be in <laughs> you can be on it, you know. I, I, I was interested, but that's okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. Okay. Kim. Thank you, Karen. Um, I would like to remain on the um, SELPA, um, the PVPSA board, and I... Um, I'm also in the future interested in being on intergovernmental, but we'll defer this time. I've never been on it. And there was one other one. In the past, you have been on Spectra on the arts. I, I, right, I have been on Spectra. I don't know if anybody else here is a champion of the arts, but um, that's a great <coughs> committee to be on, and I didn't hear a lot of an interest in that. Oh, I know. I would like to be on the dropout committee. That's Is that on here? One. Sorry for the delay. <coughs> Number eight. Number eight. The dropout committee. Okay. Okay, and I'm on the same committees I've been on for 14 years. <laughs> but um, oh, but I'm going to be a better um, SELPA member, and I'm on the DLAC, and I'm on Migrant Head Start, 
And I go to another one that's, I'd like to go to another one that's not on here, is the Migrant Parent Advisory Committee, which is not on here. Yeah, it's not on the committees, but I go to that one. How come it's not on the committees? <laughs> Karen, if I may, um, I also want to express my interest in serving as part of the Agenda Setting Committee. Okay, let's see, so I think so that's usually the vice president, the president, and then you have the option of appointing one other member to the agenda setting committee. Vice president. So I, I am interested in serving on that committee. Okay. The only thing we do, we don't have an APTOS member on it, but I guess that's okay. <laughs> that would be that would be kind of good to have an APTOS member on it too, but oh well. Okay. <laughs> That's okay, Karen. I, I defer um, placement to Maria. She, um, I think you need somebody with good experience on there, and I think she'll bring a lot to help you get the agendas ready. Okay. I would um, chime that having Maria being the outgoing vice chair and a past board president, that she would be a right fit for the agenda setting committee. Okay. Thank you. So we're not going to do closed session, correct? Yes, we need to make a motion um, to change the agenda. Yes, I'd like to, are we at agenda approval then? Kind of, sort of? Yes. <laughs> okay. Kind of, sort of. Okay, we're in, in interest of the, this evening of how long the beginning of our meeting went and having students here to perform, we are making a decision to move some items around on our agenda. So we're going to move actually to 5.1 right now for approval of agenda. I'm going to make a motion to approve the agenda with the following amendments to it. Um, all of action, uh, excuse me, all of report and discussion items in 10 are going to be deferred um, possibly to our next January meeting. They may have to be broken up between January and February, giving what we have on the January meeting as well. Um, we are also going to move, um, well, item, as refer referring to closed session, item three, we are going to move closed session to um, item 13. Uh, we will re go into closed session after we are finished with the regular open session. And in doing so, we are also, uh, item 3.2 has been removed from the closed session for tonight already. So if my motion is clear, if I could get a second. If anybody needs clarification. I'd like to go ahead and make a second. Okay, any board discussions on that? Is there any board discussion? No? Okay. All those in favor of what she has said, she has made a motion for? S say aye. 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 All those opposed? Are you opposing? No, I said aye. Oh, okay, I wasn't sure. <laughs> okay, 7-0. Yeah, now we're back at four, though. We just moved to five temporarily. Okay, so we're, we're back at four? At four. Oh, oh I hate, I, I use a mouse. It's hard for me to do it. Okay, oh, that's good. <clears throat> My welcome. <laughs> so I'm, I guess I'm welcoming you, all of you, <laughs> as the new board president. Um, I'm really looking forward to working with all of you, and I'm, I'm so glad there's a full, you know, we've got lots of people here today. That's really very cool <laughs> that we've got so many people here today. And um, I'm really excited about working with all of you, and um, I hope that our board meetings are going to be not as long so more of you can be here and have you know more input into what's going on into the board meeting we're going to try to move our board meetings a little bit faster so we're not out at the 11 or 12 o'clock time so i'm looking forward to working on doing that as well um so thank you and superintendent comments 
Thank you. Okay, so next week we will begin our winter break. So our students' last day for the calendar year is Thursday, December 20th. So on Friday, December 21st, there won't be any school for students um, as we will have a staff work day. So students and families, um, make sure that you're ready to be back at school on Tuesday, January 15th, um, because every day of school is important, so be back on time. So la, la próxima semana vamos a comenzar nuestras vacaciones de invierno. El último día de nuestros estudiantes para este año es el jueves 20 de diciembre. El viernes 21 de diciembre no habrá clases porque vamos a tener un día de trabajo para el personal. Familias y estudiantes, por favor, de asegurar que están listos para regresar el martes 15 de enero, porque todos los días de clases son importantes, así que regresen a tiempo. So I wish everyone a restful and safe winter break, and I encourage every student, even the older ones, over there, um, to continue to read 30 minutes each day or spend that time on one of our digital applications that you can access from home including Paso a Paso, Lexia, ST Math, Alex, or Achieve 3000. So les deseo a todos un descanso de invierno tranquilo y seguro. Recomiendo a todos los estu estudiantes, aunque los más grandes, que están leyendo 30 minutos diario y, uh, o dediquen este tiempo a una de nuestras aplicaciones digitales que incluye Paso a Paso, Lexia, ST Math, Alex, or Achieve 3000. So have a great break. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And now for governing board comments. Kim, do you have any comments? I want to congratulate um, the Aptos High football team for going to um, state championships. They wow. unfortunately lost in their last game, but they, um, they were a very, very talented team, mm -hmm. and um, we're very proud of them. Mm -hmm. um, this last couple of weeks, I also attended the um, Aptos um, LCAP cluster meeting and um, heard the presentation from our um, assistant superintendent, Susan Perez, and our superintendent, Michelle Rodriguez, and was very impressed with the forward motion that we're all making together and um, got to sit with and talk to some principals and parents, and um, so thanks for all that hard work. Jen. First of all, thank you for the warm welcome. Um, the previous couple of weeks, even before swearing in, were quite busy. I attended the California School Boards Association Conference, and I attended learning sessions on uh, new board member orientation, a uh, session on peer politics, what the political landscape looks like after the last election, equity access and opportunity, um, our retirement funding for PERS and STRS, Computer Science for California, Union Management <coughs> Partnerships, and I'm happy to speak with anybody and share further detail. Um, I also attended the L LCAP input meeting at Aptos High. It was a great opportunity for stakeholders to see what the district is doing and to have a voice in guiding direction. And I, I hope that we can continue to generate uh, community attendance at those events. I also attended the Dream El Sueño Benefit concert, and it was wonderful to see Andy Vargas reach back to support the community he came from, and the community in turn um, celebrate his success. And it's been a full couple of weeks. Thank you. Your turn. <laughs> I just want to say thank you for the lovely welcome from all of you. I am honored to be here. Um, we attended some Watsonville City events. We went and saw Santa Claus in Watsonville and got to participate in their snow day. I got to meet with uh, lots of different parents who are expressing ideas and excited about a new school board. So I would love to hear more community input on what do you think is important and what you'd like to see accomplished by your school board. Um, also, we had some lovely concerts at Watsonville Charter School of the Arts that the kids were doing, so I was able to attend those too. Thank you. Maria. Georgia. Um, I just want to say again, welcome to um, our new board members. I look forward to the next two years in working with you. It, um, I think, is a really exciting time in our community um, as well as last night, um, four of the city council members that were sworn in were all 
they're either current or past educators with one being our own um, very own Ari Parker who has been a teacher for Pajaro Valley for over 30 years and um, congratulations to her on her accomplishment and all of you for earning that. Um, I went to so many things that I, I was going to write them down and write them all down but I forgot to do that um, so I'm going to try to remember. <laughs> So I went to a DLAC meeting, um, District English Language Advisory Committee is what it's called. I went to the Migrant Head Start um, Policy Committee meeting. Um, it's a smaller meeting now. It's the executive board because uh, Migrant Head Start um, workers are now not um, – Migrant Head Start has finished its program that it does up until November, but they still have some policy committee meetings, so I went to their policy committee meeting. Um, and um, at the DLAC meeting, we talked about um, LCAP, and we split up into groups, and each talked about it as a part of LCAP that people and each person presented what they'd like to see different, what they'd like to see new, and then we had an, you know, at the end we, t we talked about, you know, what everybody thought about it. Um, and I went to the school board conference, and I'm not going to go through all the stuff I did there because it's going to take too long. <laughs> but um, I went to a really wonderful one on the environment. It was an environmental group, and they have quite a few teachers that have zero waste I mean zero waste. In other words, they don't. They um, they at the end of the time they well they they had they had this much waste. It was this small. <laughs> so they're, they're they're these zero waste classrooms. So they it's really incredible what they've been able to do. Um, and I, I loved learning about what they've accomplished in terms of being much more environmentally conscious. Their school district and so. But I'll. Oh go on to the next one as well. So I also went um, to, well, I went to the El Sueño concert, which was really fabulous. I mean, Andy Vargas is like, woo! <laughs> and, and his father was there as well, and his father has a mariachi band, which was really great. And we also had ba Ballet Folklorico there as well from Esperanza del Valle and the groups that they have actually taught have were there too to dance. Um, that was really great. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Oh, I also went to the <laughs> I went to the adult education 90th birthday, 90th birthday, 90th. The, the adult education has been around since 1928. 1928. Incredible. Um, so they talked about how adult schools started. Um, they started as night schools um, because they realized that a lot of people in the United States at that time were illiterate, actually, at the, in 1928. So they wanted to be able to start a school where more um, adults and younger people as well could attend. Um, but it was really great. It was a, for me, it was the greatest session I've been to since um, the state of the district that we had with Michelle, the um, 90th birthday of adult education was super wonderful. The speeches by students that, um, that were really great. Um, our Congressman Panetta was there and he spoke, he had a really great um, speech to us. And just everything that was about, um, Rhea de Hart was great because she talked about what she was doing in 1928, um, because she's 96, I think, years old now. <laughs> so she was definitely around in 1928. Michelle was there. It's great. I loved it. <laughs> um, and I can't think of any more places that I've been, but maybe more, but I can't remember anymore. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'd just like to thank everybody. Um, Daniel Dodge, Jr., my race barely recently... Uh, finished I won by 50 votes and that just shows to you that if you ever think your vote doesn't count it does you know exactly. a, a lot of people <laughs> who didn't regularly vote voted for me and I I like to thank them um, the Andy Vargas show at the high school is really great it was really supported by a lot of people in the community and I look forward to 
uh, attending an event at Mini White this Friday. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, and we're going to have now <laughs> high school students board representatives report. I'll say your name and where you're from. Hello, my name is Diana Chavez and I represent Watsonville High School. Hey, my name is Aileen Lomelli and I represent Diamond Technology Institute. Great. So start with Watsonville High and go to Diamond Technology. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Um, my name again is Diana Chavez and I will be reporting on recent events that have happened within the last month. Um, is that possible? Okay, so first we have Winter Spirit Week, and um, we had uh, we had the students dress up um, as different things um, each day. So mo uh, Monday was pajama day, Tuesday was flannel day, um, Wednesday was um, or I'm sorry, Tuesday was uh, headwear um, and holiday headwear and socks day, and then Wednesday was flannel day, etc. We also had an academic rally where we got students pumped up for finals um, this next week. Um, there will also be a cocoa cram on the 17th um, to provide, there will be there um, after school to pr um, make sure that students are ready and prepared for their finals, make sure that they're there to study. Uh, during the rally, we had, the, we had a beat ceremony where each student that applied to a UC, CSU, uh, private or community college would be given a bead necklace. And moving on. We also had the canned food drive uh, where, we, where the academies uh, collected canned food for the second food harvest and it will be ending on the 14th. On February 7th and 8th, we will have career day for grades 12 through um, 10 to 12, 12 sorry. Um, uh, we would like people to, um, to come, people from all different types of uh, career paths, uh, people that we, you might not normally think of when you think of careers. We would like for there to be around 50 to 70 speakers and we would like to um, announced that we would that we need help with um, we need people to speak there we need people from all different types of career paths so if anyone has any people that they would recommend we would be grateful as well as there would be recruitment for grade 9 which is when the freshmen will be visiting um, different pathways for um, career paths that they might w have an interest in as well as they will also be visiting the city offices and um, to gain knowledge on city government. There was also the Watsonville Empowered Leadership Institute where there was a ceremony and workshops. Uh, one of the keynote speakers was boxing champ Karina Moreno. Wow. And um, a student, uh, for the students that attended, there was community um, hours and Saturday schools be, uh, were given out. Uh, breakfast and lunch was provided and over 100 students attended. Wow. Uh, here are some pictures from the Andy Vargas uh, Benefit Dream Concert. Um, for those that don't know what it is, um, the benefit concert was to raise money for um, uh, music education. Um, and yes. And oh, scholarships too. Sorry. And scholarships. Um, there we go. Um, yes. And then going back to Battle of the Court. Um, there was a battle of the court game between Watsonville High School and Pajaro Valley. Um, there was a huge crowd and Watsonville High School won with 51 to 44. And that is all. Thank you. And I, I also heard there was somebody from Aptos here. There you are. 
Okay, so we'll have you up after after the diamond technology, after diamond technology. Yeah, right after her. Okay, go ahead. Good evening, Board of Trustees and Superintendent Dr. Michelle Rodriguez. Again, my name is Eileen, and I am from Diamond Technology Institute. Since I last spoke, our school has been extremely busy. Our new GSA club did an amazing job promoting the PVUSD anti-bullying campaign of being a kinder, more empathetic you. During our school-wide assembly, the GSA team explored the concept, the concept of negative labels that we give each other and ourselves, and we learned how to create more positive and empowering labels for ourselves. All students at our school had a visit to UC Merced to view the campus and programs and majors that are available. It was a long drive, but it was a fun day. We also had a college and career day where several colleges and businesses came to share what they do. Our school garden club has been busy planning, planning starts and is ready preparing for the spring. We also have four students competing competing in the U.S. Santa Cruz Ethics Bowl debates in January 12th. They have been working with a college mentor from U UC Santa Cruz philosophy de department, and they are ready to debate a series of ethical scenarios. Mm. We also had a great day where Alianza, Lynn Scott, and Watsonville Charter School of the Arts eighth graders visited, <laughs> visited Diamond Technology for a hands-on career technical pathway experience fair. This will be our fourth year visit, inviting the middle school charters to come and learn what career technology pathways are all about. During this time, our school identifies one or two families in need for our community and asks our donations for the families and for the holidays. This is our fourth year of Adopt a Family. If you're interested in donating to this cause, you could drop items off at our school or call someone that could come and pick them up. We are heading to finals next week, and we're looking forward for our break. Thank you for the opportunity to share what we're doing at Diamond Tech, and see you next year. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Aptas. <laughs> She'll be she'll be right back. I, I <laughs> but we're we're on TV and they need to hear you too. <laughs> okay, so the pre ACT scores are in and students that took it at Aptos High have been receiving their scores back this week. Along with that, the pre-SAT that was for all students at Aptos High, they are also receiving their scores back. They can go onto the College Board website and get them. And then teachers and students are preparing for the end of the semester finals that are next week. Many teachers are holding study sessions at Saturday school this weekend to help further prepare students for the upcoming test. So for the arts, uh, choir presented their winter performance sound city seasons this past weekend, and they performed a variety of holiday themed songs. Um, and this weekend, December 15th, a uh, dance team will perform in their eighth annual showcase, um, and those performances will be at 1 and 5 p.m. And it's gonna be in Aptos High's Performing Arts Center, and tickets are available online on our website and they'll also be sold at the door for anyone who's interested in going. Mm, sounds good. So last Friday we put on a pep rally to pump up the those people at Aptos High for the CCS football championship game and we ended up having about 500 people at the game. This week is the last week for us to donate for Second Harvest Food Bank and the students are still doing great donating money in their history classes. 
This is also the last week we are selling winter ball bids before winter break. We will still continue to sell them once we get back. And uh, for athletics, um, as it was mentioned, um, our football team won CCS, and uh, for the first time ever in Aptos High's history, we um, played in state playoffs. However, we unfortunately lost to McClemens, um, and the score was 20 to 28. It was a very disappointing loss, but it was a really good game. Uh, yeah. uh, girls basketball is off to a really strong start, and they will play the number one team in the nation soon, which is really exciting. Uh, boys basketball is unfortunately losing two to four. However, some of the football players are now playing basketball because their season's over, so hopefully that will help them. Uh, girls soccer is winning three to one, and boys soccer is winning two to one, and varsity wrestling has a tournament this uh, Saturday, which they're really excited for. So yeah, that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> We're not doing student recognition. Yeah. Are we doing student yeah. recognition? Wow. So we are doing a student recognition, but I don't have their name to do that. Where, where, where's, where's their name? We don't have the thing to give you. Mm. We're kind of late on doing this because we did so much before. Okay. Okay. Oh, who is Calabasas? Let's see. What's Calabasas is Carlos. Okay, we're doing um, Calabasas Elementary, Carlos Emanuel Vega. Emanuel. <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> and Carlos and his whole family needs to come up. I got it. Got it. It's toda su familia también. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so it was important to have Carlos's whole family up here as well as the teacher. Um, so I got to start. So uh, board president, Osmus, and then, sorry, board members, uh, Superintendent Rodriguez, um, pleased and happy to honor Carlos Vega from Calabasas Elementary School as our student of the year. Um, I am happy his entire family came because I know a big part of Carlos's life is his family. I'll get to that in a second. I want to first hit on a little bit of data because it's important to realize where Carlos has come from. Uh, Carlos began Calabasas as a second language learner. I checked his uh, CELT scores. He was a one. Uh, he had very little English at all in kindergarten. Um, by second grade, um, he was advanced in his English. In two years, he acquired English to an advanced level. Um, at this point, um, uh, on the S on the S back, this big state test, he has um, exceeded standard every year he's taken it, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. Um, and his reading, he reads at an eighth grade level. And his scores on uh, the MAP test, his reading scores um, usually range somewhere between an eighth and ninth grade level. So for a student who came from uh, you know, very little English in kindergarten to get where he is now in sixth grade is amazing. Um, a big part of that is his family. He did, um, when I asked him last week, I said, hey, Carlos, I'll see you at the board meeting. He said, I, I don't know. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, my family's got to go to church. It's an important day, and family's important to me. And uh, I think that says a lot for Carlos and his maturity for a sixth grader. Um, he even mentioned that when he was growing up, he always had wanted to be an astronaut. But now that he realizes how far away astronauts go, it's a little too far from his family, so he's thinking about changing, uh, changing that occupation. He's a huge fan of art. 
Um, you know, he says it doesn't matter what university he goes to, as long as they have a great arts program, sports, and he has things to challenge him. He says every year people try to challenge him, but it's not enough. He needs more challenges. And he said he's not talking about tests. He's talking about real challenges. Um, you know, and in closing, um, he's, he's a special kid. He's super kind. Um, he's a joy to have at school. You always see him with a smile no matter what he's doing. Uh, and when I asked him, hey, Carlos, what do you like to do on the weekends? Um, each week I put a little quote in our weekly bulletin, and I think I'm going to use Carlos's as a quote this week for our teachers uh, because he thought about it for a second. He said, I basically, I enjoy life. I enjoy doing whatever is possible, and then sometimes I like to try something that seems impossible. And I thought that was a great statement. It says a lot about him. So congratulations, Carlos. Fernandez from Hall District Elementary. Good evening, Board President Dr. Michelle Rodriguez. Good evening, members of the board. Um, so, on behalf of Teacher Marty Waite, I would like to present the San Fernandez as our student of the year for Hall District Elementary. And here are a couple words that his teacher wrote on, um, about Disan. It says, Disan is a student who engages in the world around him with curiosity. In the classroom, he strives to express his understanding in a new and interesting ways. He's eager to share his ideas and the students around him show affection and support, knowing they will always learn something new. As his principal, and on behalf of Hall District, we are proud of De San Fernandez. And I know he would like to share a few words too. I would like to thank now my principal, Ms. Fernandez, my teacher, Ms. Waite, and my parents for helping me get to this achievement. And it's a wonderful thing to, to be here. Thank you. We are all here so proud of you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm Sun, And um, I know you're going to go far in your life, and I'm so glad that you are doing so well right now. You'll continue to do really well. Thank you. <laughs> Try to get Danny to do it, but because uh, he's his district is right by here. But the next one is from Radcliffe, um, Henesis Hernandez. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm very proud to uh, present Henesis Hernandez and her lovely family. Uh, we've known the family for a long time. Uh, their oldest son, uh, Josue, was was with us as well, and um, Kinesis began um, also in kindergarten with very little English, 
and she um, has been working at grade level for the uh, last uh, three years. She actually began fifth grade reading above grade level, and she has continued to set goals and push herself hard. She's a wonderful math student who incorporates multiple strategies into her thinking, deciding which one is appropriate and when to use which one. She gets along well with her classmates. She contributes to whole class discussions and without ever taking over. When you see her in the class, she's kind of quiet and unassuming, but when you call on her, she always has something really wonderful to contribute. She takes ownership of her learning. She doesn't let others decide for her. She's a creative learner who has already de um, designed two or three different um, Christmas ornaments on the 3D printer. Her ability to build um, a snowman from nothing showed her classmates what was possible and helped push them, push them to challenge themselves. It's a pleasure to be around Hennessy, and we really want to thank the family um, that has been super supportive and um, even her preschool teacher, Manuel, is here, who saw us come on up. He saw us in the hallway, and he wanted to leave. And when he realized that she was being recognized tonight, he said, I'm going to stay. So <laughs> thank you so much to the whole family. Felicidades a toda la familia. I'm very proud of you. Thank you so much. Genesis, I remember when you pulled more white hair from my hair. <laughs> Thank you. And I got another student here. They also going to talk to you, and I'm very proud of you guys. Thank you so much for being wonderful students. Thank you. One more star, sorry, I'm just reading out. Starlight Elementary, Ricardo Vidal Perez. Good evening, President Asmunson. I need to learn how I need to learn how to say that correctly. Asmunson. Good evening, President Asmunson, and congratulations to all of our new members. Good evening, Dr. Rodriguez and our other district leaders. Um, I'm Jackie Medina, the principal at Starlight, and I'm really thrilled to have our uh, student of the year. I'm going to have one of our fifth grade teachers talk about um, Ricardo Vidal Perez um, this tonight. But uh, first, I want to uh, quiero apreciar a su familia y quiero felicitar a todos ustedes por todo su apoyo en su éxito. Good evening. I'm uh, very excited to present Ricardo as Starlight Student of the Year. Um, Ricardo has attended Starlight since kindergarten, and all of his teachers agree that he's very deserving for this recognition. Um, he's a really focused student and successful and a very positive leader among his peers. Um, I want to share with you some of his accomplishments at Starlight. Um, for the past two years, he's participated in the REACH program for our gifted and talented students. And um, in the REACH program, students are able to identify a problem and um, and, um, and make an invention to solve the problem. Uh, last year, he invented a special chair that is compact and collapsible to, um, as a space-saving solution in classrooms. Um, he's currently brainstorming another invention for this year, so we're excited to see what he comes up with. Um, he's also been a participant in um, the Youth Cinema Project for two years. Um, as a fourth grader, his script was chosen by his peers and produced into a short film. 
Um, in addition to being the writer, he was also the director as well as an actor. You'll find him back on that board over there in a few places. Um, this year, he will be the director of photography for the film that his group will produce and also a camera person. Um, and that'll be produced this spring. It was called, uh, his film is called The End, so you can look for that. Um, finally, I want to talk about character a little bit. Um, at Starlight, we recognize students about every six weeks for different character traits. And um, so far this year, we have focused on initiative, caring, and integrity. Um, Ricardo's a student that I could definitely pick for any of our character traits. Um, he really is, he shows empathy, he's always doing the right thing whether someone's looking or not, um, and he's a kid that everyone just gets along with all the time. Um, so thank you very much to your family and excellent job, well done. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. I want to begin by thanking my parents for helping me be responsible and do well in school. Whenever I need help, they are there for me. I also want to recognize the teachers from Starlight and the principals who have taught me for the past six years. Starlight is a place where I always feel safe and treated fairly. One of my favorite parts of school at Starlight have been film class for the past two years. Another part of school it, I enjoy is math. One of my goals in the future is to become a police officer. I want to be a police officer so I can help people. Finally, I want to say thank you to the board mem members for recognizing me. Having this recognition makes me feel good about myself. Thank you. The, the student board reports are pretty good, too. Anyways, we're going to do an approval of the agenda. Oh, we haven't we approved the agenda? Oh. Uh -huh. OK. <coughs> so how do, we, how do we approve the November 14th meetings? Can I make a motion to approve the November 14th minutes? Second a motion. Oh, for those who are here. <laughs> so um, the three new board members will just abstain. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor that are here? Aye. 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 There is four of us. Mm -hmm. <coughs> So please ask for abstentions. Okay. Oh, yeah. Those those who have to abstain. <laughs> I will be abstaining. Abstaining. Three abstentions. We have to do approval on November twenty eighth too. Wow. <laughs> we have to approve the also the November twenty eighth minutes. I would um, like to move approval of the November twenty eighth uh, two thousand eighteen minutes. A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those abstentions? Aye. Aye. Okay. We're going to have um, the unions to come up now uh, with first one being the Pajaro Valley. Um, if I may, point of order, um, 7.1. We have a little bit comment. Okay. Oh. Do we have any public comment? Okay, you're, you're the vice president. 
price does not have to do with there it is. You don't need to show that. Oh. Are these all the new ones? So to call the people that are going to be called up, you need to do it. Is there any particular order? No. I mean, whoever did it first. Okay. Um, Seven point one. I just have Maximus. No, it's Maximus. The oh, Paharonian Maximus. calls me Maximus. Oh. So tonight I'm not here as an education advocate, but I'm here as your village priest. Yes. My voice is a little weak from all the infighting. You have taken vows as trustees, and as your village priest, I need to remind you that your primary obligation is to the students and not to any backers that you may have. Why do I remind you of this moral obligation? Four years ago, this district was rated at 12th percentile in the state, a state that was rated at 44th percentile in the country. It took, if I took the Aptos schools out of those numbers, our local schools would be in the bottom 10th percentile. Two years ago, there began to uh, change, and we're seeing the beginnings of significant improvement. I would hope that you will become part of this reformation, metamorphosis, that is taking place. If you do not, then you are dooming our children for some time to come. Because when you're that low, we need to do something. Some of you are elected with a goal to improve teachers' pay. Most of you do not know the whole story. Our teachers' wages have been increased 18% over the last five years and are the second highest in the area. Their total compensation, wages plus benefits, are better than 85% of the teachers in this state. So why can't they be paid more? Well, the present health plan is equivalent to the Platinum Plus in Obamacare, or ACA. Less than 5% of the people in California can afford a Platinum Plan. So how can we afford a Platinum Plan? PVFT has, not, has been unwilling to allow the teachers to have options on their health care so that the teachers can do trade-offs between wages and health coverage. This is a question you should address before charging ahead for wage increases. Secondly, as PVFT found out this year with their demands, the County Office of Education will reject their demands because it's financially reckless and endangers the district. This occurred in the 90s in a similar situation, and the state had to take over this district. It was terrible. Do not repeat history. Learn the facts, act accordingly. You're capable of that. Give the teachers the options to choose rather than back a monolithic approach by PVFT. Thank you for your time, and God bless you for serving. Thank you, Maximus. So I got Starlight students, so we can, Ricardo Vidal, Miles Levy, Areli Martinez, Jackie Alvarez, Jocelyn Nunez. Hi, my name is Jocelyn Nunez, and I'm in fifth grade. Hi, my name is Arely Martinez, and I'm in fifth grade. Hi, my name is Jackie Alvarez, and I'm in fifth grade. Hi, my name is Miles Levi, and I'm in third grade. Hi, my name is Ricardo, and I'm, and I'm in fifth grade. This year, our school is working toward becoming an ocean garden school. That means we will do things to take our s to care, take care of our s our planet, starting with our s our with our schoolyard. To start, we counted how many pieces of trash we could pick up in ten minutes. Five classes picked over one thousand five hundred pieces of trash, and they weighed over seven pounds. That is a lot of trash that did not 
get washed into the bay during the recent rains. Now we have each grade level picking up litter after every recess one day a week. Classes are also volunteering to do a monthly cleanup. We are using money for the Ocean Guardian grant to buy trash pinchers. We are also buying school water balls so we can reduce the amount of single-use plastic bottles on campus. Later this year, we are hoping to install a wall a water filtration system for refilling these bottles with clean filtered water. We hope to be back in the spring to let you know our progress. We are excited to be Ocean Guardians. Thank you guys very much. Um, next, we have Aaron Levy. Levi? Levi? Sorry. Thank you very much. Welcome to um, our new, welcome our new board members. Um, Jennifer Shocker, I know you're my trustee for my area, and I want to con congratulate all of you. And um, your Nomination last minute was a surprise, Daniel Dodge, and I'm proud for you. Um, my name's Erin Levi, and I'm a um, second grade bilingual teacher at Starlight Elementary, and I'm here on behalf of CABE, the Bilingual Teachers Association, as well as parents, and I'm here to announce a really exciting concert that's happening in January, and it's a fundraiser for um, giving out scholarships to high school students. Last year we gave out five um, scholarships of $250 to five bilingual candidates that applied. And everybody had to apply and there was a big process of getting them, you know, trying to figure out who was going to get the scholarship. And this year, um, Jose Luis Orozco is going to be coming back for our second annual. We're going to try to make it an annual event. and. Um, I'm in charge of promoting it, and I'm having a little bit of a hard time getting it into the peach jar. So I'm trying to get everybody's help and trying to push that through before winter vacation so we can get it out to our, our audience and um, try to get as many people into the Mellow Center, which will be January 19th, Saturday. And I want us all to mark it on the calendars, and I want to try to get it into the peach jar as soon as possible. It's been really hard for me as a, as a teacher to get it into the, to the peach jar. So um, I do have flyers here, if, if I'm allowed to give those out. Um, I'd like to do so, but um, I'd like to give them out at the school and make sure they get um, published um, throughout the PVUSD community yeah. for all parents and students to um, enjoy this concert. Um, it is a bilingual concert, um, and it is going to be from 5 to 6.30, January 19th, at the Mellow Center. And uh, Ruby Vasquez and Estrellas de Esperanza will be also performing Baile Folklorico afterwards. So it'll be um, an hour and a half of really awesome cultural um, song and dance. So I'm hoping everybody can come. Hola, me llamo Aaron Levi. Yo soy una maestra bilingüe. Um, aquí en la comunidad um, enseño en Starlight por, um, enseño en Starlight por um, 16 años. Y Quiero invitar a todos ustedes que están presentes de um, venir a nuestro concierto bilingüe um, con José Luis Orozco, que va a cantar. Um, él está ofreciendo nuestro segundo anual um, concierto para beneficiar becas para los um, alumnos de las escuelas secundarias. Um, estamos regalando um, becas según la asistencia. Entonces, queremos invitar mucha gente a llenar el Centro Melo para que podamos regalar más becas este año que viene. Um, entonces, quiero su apoyo y tengo um, los volantes hoy, pero también estoy buscando ayuda del distrito para que ponemos en el um, Peach Jar para que todos saben en el distrito escolar um, acerca de nuestro concierto. Entonces, será el 19 de enero. Justo después de regresar de vacaciones, por eso tengo prisa de anunciar hoy. Y um, comenzará a las 5 y va a terminar a las 6 y media. Entonces, es una hora y media. Y um, vamos a tener um, baile folclórico con 
um, Ruby Vasquez y las estrellas de Esperanza. Thank you. Gracias. Um, I have a quick question. Peach Jar, who's in charge of that? That's a really good. Sure. So any outside organization, we actually have board policy around it. It all goes through the um, through business services. So I just went to um, make sure that um, that Joe was aware, and it, so it goes through Kathy Fuentes. Um, and so it just there is a process. There's a form that outside organizations have to fill out in order for us to follow board policy. It's a great program. Okay, comments are done. So now we're going to start with the employee organizations, unions, PVFT. Hi, thank you. Francisco Rodriguez, the Pajaro Valley Federation of Teachers. Uh, first, I'd like to welcome uh, all the trustees and welcome you as a board. Uh, everybody, uh, well, the seven of you as a new board. Um, over the uh, last uh, few months, as you know, we've had some uh, very uh, intense negotiations that ended in a uh, tentative agreement. Uh, later, in the meeting, you will uh, be asked uh, to approve uh, the first interim report. Uh, and it is recommended that you give yourself a positive certification. Um, I know administration will give you details as to what exactly that means. But in general, what it means is that you did the right thing in approving the tentative agreement last year. Positive certification means that for the next three years, you are uh, going to you're going to be uh, doing well financially, and yes, we will all have to be mindful and careful of um, budgets, of revenues, of expenses, but the board did the right thing in not uh, cutting. Uh, benefits in not implementing a cap, in working with the unions in improving wages, con uh, wages and working conditions, in providing stipends for those teachers that uh, have uh, specific qualifications or specific skills. And over the next year or the next few months, we're hoping um, less than six months, we will again be negotiating uh, with you, with the administration, for the same things that we were negotiating before. A way to attract and retain qualified teachers, ways to improve our facilities, ways to improve working conditions, because those same working conditions that teachers face are the students' learning conditions. It was mentioned to you that um, we have some challenges in academic achievement, uh, and even worse challenges if you pull out the uh, Aptos schools. However, left out of the equation is the fact that the same te the teachers in Aptos work under the same contract, are represented by the same organization as teachers in Watsonville. It was also not mentioned to you that Aptos has a different zip code than Watsonville schools. So there is a lot more to academic achievement than uh, the test scores. There's a lot more to academic achievement and to a good education than just uh, putting out numbers and making statements uh, that do not follow good practices and do not uh, follow a good collaborative approach to improving both the lives of the employees of, of the district and the achievement of students. 
Thank you. Um, good evening, members of the board and Dr. Rodriguez. Uh, first of all, CSCA, on behalf of the class of five employees, would like to welcome the new board members to the Pajaro Valley family. We're excited to have you. And knowing that you're um, educators and parents and leaders in your workplace, it's refreshing to know that our board will continue to be active in listening to the community and in listening to all the different stakeholders that make up the Pajaro Valley family. Um, I do apologize. Some of our member leaders have to wake up really early tomorrow to go with Dr. Rodriguez to Sacramento, so they couldn't be here with me tonight. But I did want to say two things. I definitely want to second what Francisco said and just add one fact, because we represent the class of five employees. And it's a fact that a lot of our members live paycheck to paycheck. That's a reality, especially living here in Santa Cruz. And just as an example, having health insurance is the difference between making a decision of working for the district or having to look for a job somewhere else. So when we're looking at the facts about what constitutes uh, all the expenses that, that we have to pay, let's also look at how what we have here in Pajaro is special and it allows a lot of our members, a lot of community members that live in this community to be able to work for the district, to be able to serve the students, and to continue to be part of the Pajaro family. Now, the other thing that I wanted to mention is something that you're gonna be seeing later on tonight, which is an MOU that we signed with the district. It's AB 1808, and pretty much what that is is the state of California um, in June decided to give $50 million for classified employees across the state in order to help specifically our 10th our, our members that work don't work the full year um, and do defer payment throughout the year. The, the state of California decided to do this program for one year where if an employee puts, for, for example, $3,000 in defer payment, the state of California is going to match that by $3,000. And the reason why they've decided to do this is because those are usually the employees that get paid the least. When, when we're talking about the pay structure. And it's they, the, the intent of this law was to give as a token of appreciation to those employees and as an incentive for them to continue to work in education. And so um, CSCA hopes that the board will, will, ra will ratify this MOU and allow more than 600 of our employees to be able to benefit from this program. So thank you, um, I welcome everyone. I think it's gonna be an exciting new year for all of us and have a good night, thank you. Okay, is there anybody from Pavem? Oh, there's another one from Pavem, good for you. <laughs> for OT. Yes. Good evening, President Osmondson, <laughs> Superintendent Rodriguez, members of the school board, and members of cabinet. I'm Carol Ortiz, I'm director of extended learning department here in the Pajaro Valley Unified School District. As a member representing PAVAM, who's a Pajaro Valley Association of Managers, we're a non-unionized organization that gathers monies for, for um, scholarships and supporting students throughout the school year. I just wanted to welcome all of the new board members. We look forward to working together with you and welcoming you to our schools and to our departments so you can see all of the great work that we're doing as administrators here in the district, collaborating with teachers and classified staff to make sure our, stu our students are getting what they need. So welcome. Thank you. <laughs> okay, the last one is Communication Workers of America. Um, not here. So, um, we are gonna do the action items. We're not gonna do the report and discussion, but we are gonna do action items that are very important. So we're starting with 9.1, first interim report. And that's with Helen. And 
angel. <laughs> All right, uh, good evening, uh, President Osmundson, our uh, Vice President Dodge Jr., uh, newly elected uh, members of the board, uh, Superintendent Rodriguez, and members of the public. Uh, joining me this evening would be our uh, Director of Finance, um, and we have our point up the PowerPoint to give an overview of our first interim report. Um, in your board uh, packet, you have the first interim report with supporting financial documents, and the PowerPoint is a summary uh, to collect all that information and uh, provide that in a more um, user-friendly format. With that being said, uh, we're going to go over uh, an overview of the budget cycle and reports, uh, our assumptions within our first interim, updated multi-year look outlook, uh, variance report, and then next steps. For our district and districts in California, we are structured around various uh, ed code and uh, legal requirements that we must submit to the state and to here at the local county level. And so here you have an outline uh, as we approach our fiscal year. By July 1, as a district, we need to adopt our budget. Um, by September 15th is our unaudited actuals. Um, we have an independent auditor that is separate from the district, and it's a third party um, that come in, and they do uh, full transparency. They go through our, um, our district finances, line item by line item. They go through various departments and they review our budgets, our expenditures, our revenues. Um, they go through all the books. Um, and we have a positive report coming later on uh, in the next month or so. There was no audit findings for this current past year. Um, but that takes place in February, by February, uh, mid-February. Uh, December is the first interim, and then March 15th uh, is the second interim. And I hope we never have to do a third interim. And the reason is, is because districts that do a third interim those are the districts that are fiscally insolvent and cannot meet their two-year um, uh, fiscal outlook. And so hopefully we're never in that position. But a third interim is required for districts that are fiscally insolvent, and it's um, mandated by the county and eventually goes up to the state. So on um, or before July 1st, um, as I mentioned, by required by Ed Code, the district needs to accomplish the following. One thing for community stakeholder input, both union leadership, parents, um, teachers, staff, community stakeholders as a whole, is their opportunity to, uh, to provide input and question and or um, have discussion about our budget, our priorities, our commitments, our revenues, our expenses. And so that public hearing is held uh, during that point in time. Once the hearing is complete and in public input is taken in, then the board reviews the uh, a budget with that uh, input and adopts a budget. Uh, no later than five days after that, uh, in or before July 1st, whichever occurs first, we sh uh, need to file with the county superintendent of um, Santa Cruz County. Um, this is all pending uh, with the information we have in point in time. And so the governor, now we have a newly elected governor, Governor Newsom, um, once he proposes and finalizes his budget through the legislature, it's not confirmed until he signs off. And once we have a signature on that budget, then we as a district potentially have to make further adjustments because he has a proposed budget that he has to work with in his legislature. And then what is the outcome of that? And so once it becomes final and he signs off, then districts throughout California need to implement and that can be positive or it can be negative and it fluctuates. Um, but as a district, we have 45 days, uh, if it's major, to make any adjustments to our um, district budget. The first interim report is a snapshot in time and it's really um, in our fiscal roadmap. It's um, kind of like a, an opportunity for us to pull over and take a look at where we're at. And based on our annual budget, our assumptions, and what we've had projected in our revenue and expenses, where are we at? And so it captures October 31st, and we provide it in December. And then the second interim we'll bring is in, uh, captures from January 31st 
and that is brought to you in March. So we have two opportunities to kind of do a time, um, uh, a point in time review of our budget revenue and expenditures and how we align to our adopted budget and also an opportunity to make adjustments. And we'll talk about that uh, later in the presentation. That can range from state funding or local, whether that's enrollment, um, expanding a program, or making any kind of adjustment that impacts our budget. One of the things I'd like to point out in uh, 42.130, our ed code, is as a board and as a district, we have to um, uh, approve um, our various first interim and second interim reports. Uh, the breakdown between uh, the first interim and the second interim report, there's three qualifications, positive, qualified, and negative. I'm pleased uh, and very proud to stand in front of you this evening. We're recommending and we have a positive certification. And what does that mean? We will meet uh, our financial obligations for the current and two outgoing years. So for the next uh, the two years to come in our current year, we're able to meet our financial obligations. And that's with current revenue and current expenditures. So we're fiscally healthy. A qualified certification, you may not meet their finan financial obligations for the current or two outgoing years. And so uh, when we hit a qualified uh, certification, I get that's actually a very bad thing because that's where uh, myself and Helen, the superintendent, the board, we have to come together with the plan and meet with the county and actually come up with a plan to meet our current plan for that current fiscal year to meet our financial goal and to stay in the black. And so I mention that because then a negative certification actually kicks into a fiscal recovery plan where it's actually mandated to make certain adjustments within our budget so that we can uh, uh, meet our obligations for the current year but also the two out years. And so if you think about it, a three-year window, um, positive certification is meaning that we can meet our current need and the two out years. Uh, qualified is may not meet our current year and may not meet the two. And a negative is we're not gonna even meet our current budget and outgoing budget, so two years. So um, we just wanna make sure that we always stay in positive certification and we continue to do so. Um, so we have that, it's provided to the county, and it, it provides an opportunity, as I mentioned, uh, captures our multi-year projections from uh, expenditures, revenues, enrollment, and uh, other fiscal activity. Um, it's also another key piece to point out that the budget presented, it also reflects a prior year unaudited actuals. So we have audited actuals and unaudited actuals. And the easiest way to explain that is we, if we're stating in our budget we're going to spend $100 on fuel or a bus, are we spending $100 or does it come in at $80 or is it at $125? So comparing our actuals to unaudited actuals of what we have budgeted, it's kind of to kind of the thermometer to see where we're at, but at a very large scale. So in our first interim assumptions, um, our revenue we have our local control funding formula uh, based on the Governor uh, Brown's uh, July budget proposal. And we are using the FICMAT um, and school services calculator. Um, another key thing that I wanted to point out is Governor Brown was successful in fully funding LCFF. And um, for those that kept abreast on the uh, state economy, he was actually able to accomplish this and the, le the legislature two years earlier than anticipated. Uh, so we as public school districts throughout California get to benefit from that. Our average daily attendance is a little bit over 17,259 for the current year. Our expenses uh, include employee step and column uh, for our staff and uh, also includes our STRS and PERS rate uh, increases in our multi-year and then also captures our health and welfare contributions and increases. Um, it does capture negotiated agreements from uh, bargaining units uh, from the prior year, but it does not include any future negotiated uh, agreements. Fiscal outlook. Um, so we in the um, finance and fiscal part of the district, we uh, try, we do our best to keep a pulse on the economy, um, our state, different funding um, 
uh, initiatives that are taking place. One of them that I'm pretty nervous about, and Paul and I have talked about this, uh, and our superintendent is the Cadillac tax, and uh, we're pleased to say that it's been postponed to 2022, uh, and that was recently done. What the Cadillac tax is for uh, public school districts, it's a 40% tax um, on employer plans exceeding uh, 10,200 on premiums per, per year for individuals, and anything above 27,500 for families. And so there's gonna be a tax that potential uh, districts may have to pay in addition of. Wow. Um, another uh, concern that we have, and we are feeling the impact uh, directly as a district, and I know other businesses and entities are feeling the same, is uh, the tariffs and cost of materials. So in our facilities uh, division, and we are seeing a lot of progress uh, with our Measure L bond program, and also our deferred maintenance projects. But we have, uh, as a state, but in the nation, we have, because of the tariffs, and there's a 13% increase in steel, 20% uh, increase in aluminum, wow. and lumber and plywood is about 18% increase. Um, and that's not counting um, appliances for our, central, for our kitchens throughout our district, so any appliances that we have to replace. So I just put that in perspective that we're also keeping a pulse on that as well. I just want to ask, is that, is because, is that because of tariffs, the tariffs that? Yes, it, from, it's from a national level or global uh, level. That, but that the global tariffs that, that the administration is putting on. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So exports and imports and what that impact is to us at the local level. Um, another component that we uh, just recently confirmed of last Friday through our CalPads report is we saw a slight decline in our enrollment of 172 students. Um, we are uh, keeping a very thorough eye on that and making sure what does that look like moving forward. We do also understand there is about seven um, city housing developments that have been approved or underway. What we're also working with is a, um, a demographer and looking at projections to kind of put um, and working with the city to see how many of these developments, how much enrollment that potentially can bring in and then what parts of the district. So we're also working on that. The other component is uh, rising health care costs, um, and that's ongoing. We are part of a, um, a group pool. There's about 300 districts in our CISC um, uh, pool. And so we are, I think the benefit that we've seen is our costs of benefits haven't increased as much as the private sector or other entities, but they start, they're still are uh, increasing. And then last is uh, the state economy. Um, as I mentioned, Governor Brown got us uh, two years earlier on LCFF funding. He was trying, before he left office, uh, he was unsuccessful, but he, w he did a good try on getting an extension of LCFF and additional funding. Um, we will see what Governor Newsom uh, provides uh, with his annual budget that's coming up very soon and how that uh, impacts public education. What we do see uh, and we do know of STIRS and PERS uh, increases that we are faced as a district. Um, for example, our STRS percentage um, in 1819 was 16.2, and for PERS it was 18 uh, percent, and that went up is going to be projected 1920. Our STRS is going up to 19.1, and for 2020 it's going up to 23.5 percent. Michelle has something to say really quick. Yeah. So on the 172 um, student decline, you're not going to really see the impacts of that on this budget because of the seven housing developments. But I did want to mention if we did not have those housing developments, that would have equated to about a $1.7 million loss in funding. Yeah. So 172 students is not a slight amount. It is actually a significant amount of money because if you remember, those students don't come from just one classroom or one school, but it's spread out throughout, this, throughout the district. Um, and so because of that, it's not directly, oh, we lost 172 students, so that means that we can reduce staffing and then recoup our cost. It actually is pretty close to just a $1.7 million loss. So I just mentioned that because it's a good thing that we have the seven developments because we're hope we're anticipating to recoup that money um, but we do have school districts throughout the area that are losing um, ADA 
and it is a significant challenge if we ever get in the point where we are declining enrollment. Mm -hmm. yeah. And on the next slide, um, one of the, the pieces um, to follow up uh, on that is that regarding our LCFF revenue is one of the things that we were able to accomplish as a district and it's kind of like a net um, wash is that we're able to increase our unduplicated count and that was able to get accomplished um, for those that qualify for free and reduced English language learners or foster youth and so we were able to increase that from 78 percent to a little bit over 81 percent so that also increased our LCFF funding and kind of helps us um, as our superintendent stated the loss of enrollment is very significant but we have a one-year lag of that impact and potentially we have the development and then we also have our unduplicated count rising as well and we'll talk about some other items that we're working on as well um, on this slide just wanted to look at unrestricted um, our funds for 1819 and one of the uh, components I wanted to point out is our contributions um, which you see 1819 on the fourth um, uh, row down at 34.6 and if you go to the right at 20 for 1920 at 35.3 and 2021 it's at 36 uh, a little bit over 36 and that contribution is to cover um, our SELPA and then also our routine restricted maintenance and within that that's our custodians our maintenance workers and grounds personnel so from our unrestricted um, um, budget is transferred into our restricted budget and you'll see the correlation on the next slide and then it also covers some of our programs that are not fully funded uh, by other agencies um, also you also see on the the row below that the increase and decrease we have a deficit in our multi-year for 1819 all the way to 21 the deficit is going down from 7.68 all the way to the far right at a little bit over six um, our ending balance, I think this is also uh, making sure that we are spending our dollars um, now and is going from the 33.82 uh, on the top left corner and you're going to your ending balance in 2021 at 12.5. And so we're using um, our funds accordingly. Um, the weather component that we get questions on is what is the committed fund balance? Yeah, so we really try to be more transparent and put the footnotes on the bottom of our slides but that committed fund balance is um, a board initiative and, and direction to help us uh, move forward with PV high school football field project and so that was a, a set aside for that project so that we can move forward and, and be uh, uh, successful getting that done for our community um, Danny wants to ask a question really yes quick. I just have a quick question is there any signs of us losing any students because I know in certain parts of San Jose they've seen it that you know losing students at elementary schools I mean is, is there anything indicating that that can happen to us we're currently reviewing the the data and we're working with a, a third party right now to review mm -hmm. um, and kind of look at what we look at the uh, census data mm -hmm. birth trends mm -hmm. um, development and all the components mm -hmm. and we'll come back um, at a later point in time to kind of give a, an overview of that but the answer is yes, we lost this year alone 350 elementary school student or 350 elementary students. The reason why we didn't have a net deficit of 172 is because we increased at the secondary level. But we, for the second year in a row, have seen decreases in elementary students. Oh, so it looks like there might be another trend. Oh, thank you. So I have a quick question, if I may, um, President Altmason. Mm -hmm. um, so what have we seen contributing to that decrease, the, the, the 350 students? Is it students um, opting out to go to a private or an independent charter school, or is it that our students are moving? Have we had a chance to look at that information? Yeah, so the majority of it is um, students that are leaving the area. They're not necessarily doing transfer requests to either private schools or charter schools at this point. Um, of course, tomorrow um, we do have a group of CSEA and PVF team members that are going, leaving with me at 5.30 in the morning here um, to go up to speak um, 
against Navigator um, Charter School. If that does happen, then we are guaranteed a loss of about $4 million. Um, so that is significant for us. Um, so that, but housing has been cited. Um, I know there was an article that spoke to the entire county that there was a trend in the entire county of lower elementary numbers. There's some speculation that people are not able to sell their homes. And so what's happening is they're aging out. So their children, they're staying there and their children are getting older and older. And so that's why we have fewer elementary students. Um, so I think it's, it's multiple factors. A lot of people are going to different parts of California that are cheaper or they are going out of state. So we're seeing a lot of people going to Arizona and Washington. Thank you. The other comp uh, piece I wanted to point out is uh, positive certification. If you look at the middle of the chart, you see 3% reserve. We maintain our 3% reserve and that's uh, a state requirement and we make sure that we met that. Now, if you go two rows down, committed additional 3% reserve. That was a board resolution that uh, the board passed to have 3% on top of the state mandated 3%. And um, I'm worried because in the 2021, we're able, the first two years, current and out year, we're able to maintain that 3%. But if you look at 2021, we have to dip into that 3%. And so bring it down to 0.39. And so this is, uh, probably the leanest uh, budget that we've worked on uh, as a district. Um, our, we'll touch on our variance and I'll explain what that is, but uh, our numbers are pretty spot on. And, uh, but I, I would believe that just looking at where we're at, um, I'm concerned about 2021, um, knowing that we have to use the additional 3% reserve to meet our um, financial obligations. So our general fund restricted we are spending down our restricted funds uh, on program requirements. And this is actually uh, commend the board and our superintendent. You're, we're taking the initiative. We're making sure to use the current funds on current students. And so you see the beginning balance as it's dwindling down and making sure that we're investing that uh, into our, our school sites. Um, also encompassed in the, these funds is our Prop 39 Energy, uh, Clean, uh, California Clean Energy Act uh, funds and that is uh, throughout the district, and that's used for uh, uh, solar. It could be used for LED lighting to enhance um, our utilities. And the other component that we're required to uh, spend is in our special ed mental health um, based on the need. Um, so this is moving forward as accordingly and commend uh, the district. So here we have both the combined unrestricted and restricted um, one of the things I wanted to point out is if you go to the top left corner, your beginning balance at 39.96, you have your revenues, your expenditures, we are deficit spending at 10.9, and then you have your ending balance of 28.98. That ending balance now becomes your beginning balance for 1920. So now we have a beginning balance of 28.98 for 1920. And then we have the revenues that come in, our expenditures, our deficit spending 8.6, and then our ending balance is 20.31. Now that becomes your beginning balance in 2021. You have a revenues of 255.91, expenditures of 262.11, and a deficit of 6.2. So I'd also like to commend uh, our team that we are reducing our deficit, and we're working very hard on that. Um, we still got more work to do, um, but we are doing uh, all implementing best practices as much as we can. Um, the other component that I commend and why I'm recommending a positive certification is you look at all the outgoing years, your 3% three per, three reserve is met. And then once again, uh, caution though that we had to dip into our additional 3% reserve in 2021. So Joe, before you go on, please explain why the revenues go up over the years. So we have, as I mentioned before, we have an increase um, now that LCFF is fully funded, but that is a direct correlation to LCFF being one fully funded, our unduplicated count increasing, and so it's a slight increase uh, with that that contributes to our revenues increasing. And so you also have that plus 
uh, you see the total of your beginning balance being rolled into the following year, and that also contributes to that component as well. Okay, also and, I, and oh, okay, okay, go ahead. And also included in that, um, which we currently have right now, as I mentioned, using uh, FICMAT and school services uh, uh, calculator, COLA is also built in within that. And so COLA uh, is also built in with that, and that's all we have. And as I mentioned, in this point in time, this is what we have. I hope things change with uh, the new governor, and we'll see as the state budget uh, gets um, developed. Okay, so I also want to have direct your attention to the assigned fund balance and the committed fund balance. So in addition, the reason why that's going up, so if you think, okay, so we're getting more money each year, what's happening is we're actually using that one-time committed funds. So in you look at the third row from the bottom that says committed fund balance, which is for the um, which is for the approved committed fund. So PVHS, as you all know, we're we're moving forward on that finally. So that is that is that four million that is sitting there is going up into the reserves. So it's and then when you look at the assigned fund balance, it goes down. Um, it goes down as well. And so I mention that because we, we, I don't want people to look and say, okay, we're, we have $11 million more of revenue within the span. It's actually what's happening is we're taking it out of our reserves and our, our fund balance, our committed fund balances, and we're using it. Um, and so um, I just wanted to mention that because otherwise you might think that we have quite a bit of um, flux of additional funds, which we don't have. And we're currently, um, you know, in bid process with PV High School right now on the project. It's moving forward. And so we'll get, we hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we'll get confirmation of the pricing from the various contractors working on that. So that's what the 4.18 uh, is to help us make sure that project moves forward. And as you see, it's not in the outgoing years. And now our contributions uh, that I mentioned uh, previously. Um, and I wanted just to show that from our unrestricted transferring to our restricted programs, and the two main restricted programs is our SELPA and then our routine restricted maintenance. Um, SELPA, we're transferring 27.5 million, 1920, 28.1, .1, and 2021-28.7, and our routine restricted maintenance, 6.2 million, 6.3 million, and 2021 at 6.4. Uh, one of the, uh, in our fiscal outlook, we're also bracing for it, and throughout the state, um, the other districts, for 2021, we have a mandatory 3% uh, routine restricted maintenance match, and this was actually in place back in, I would say, 07, 08, um, and it was flexed, and what I mean by that is in the state of California, it was um, mandatory for districts to have that 3% match for state funds, that was restriction was taken off because when we went through the recession, districts were able to use that 3% and transfer it into the general fund to help offset layoffs. And so that was uh, undertaken. Now the state is re-implementing that 3% match. And so that comes into effect in 2021. Um, and explain to me that a little tiny bit more, the three, I mean, just, just so I can understand it. I, I could understand what you were saying about what happened in the recession, but Moving forward, you're saying that we, explain to me. All right. Um, so the state required a 3% match. Okay. Um, so if they gave you 3%, you had to match it with 3%. Okay. You had to and that was in 08, 09. Okay. That restriction was taken away. Um, and the reason is because of the recession. No, I don't understand that. I got that. And it, they had to give districts the opportunity to give flexibility. Mm -hmm. In that point in time of budget cuts throughout the state, districts were faced with certain fiscal challenges. No, so they were able to use that money to build up their general fund but to help. But what, do you, what are they doing now? So now, for 2021, the 3% is re-implemented now. Okay. So, so school districts now have, have to, have to uh, put in 3% of the routine restricted maintenance. They have to match it. For they 2021. Didn't for 20, they didn't have to, but now they do. Uh, we see that coming down the road, so mm -hmm. I just wanted to uh, mention that as well. Um, the other component is uh, Diamond Tech and Early Childhood Education. 
and I know Kathy and the team were w and our fiscal team are working hard for a grant. Uh, I think it's due on Friday. We're getting getting that all put together. Um, so we're working at as, as a team to look at other funding uh, sources uh, to build that up in our services. Our variance report. Um, I'd like to hand it off to Helen so she can explain our variance report. Okay, in your board packets, in the board packets, there is a detailed um, uh, variance report, but I wanted to touch on a few things. Um, at the first interim, we add in the carryovers that we had in all of our um, federal, state, and local grants. So our, incre our revenue and expenditures increase based on that. Um, we had very minor changes in our state and local grants. Um, for expenditures, we now have a lot of the people, a lot of the vacancies that we had at the beginning of the school year are now filled. And as you know, the vacancies are filled, we put the, the new employees in there. And so we have budgeted a certain amount. Well, they may come in higher or lower than that. So um, those adjustments are made. And then for benefits, we have a rate that we um, budget for. And depending on if they are single or have a family, we'll make the difference there. Um, I mentioned the state and federal capital out um, lay increase for prior year because of the remaining one-time funds that were need were set aside for science labs and restroom um, upgrades. Um, our percent variance is about 1.36 percent, and the best practices statewide is about two to three percent. So I feel real um, positive about all the ch you know what we've done in in our budgets so far this year. Oops, what did they do? <laughs> so next steps. Um, once uh, the first interim is approved, we will send it to the COE and they will review it and they will uh, either certify us as positive, you know, agree with our certification of positive certification or come out with another certification. In all the years I've been here, they've agreed with our certifications. Um, we'll continue to res review our 1819 budget um, to make sure that we have, um, you know, all the correct expenditures in there. Um, we'll work with um, the HR department, all the departments and sites on position control. Um, my staff has had quarterly meetings with um, school sites and department heads, and we're going to continue to do those. We do those three to four times a year, and we're going to start reviewing their 1920 budgets coming up um, probably in January, February, March time frame um, because we'll be doing staffing meetings to get pre you know start, start prepping up for the next year's budget. And one of the other things that we've done in partnership with West Ed um, is our, uh, we've developed um, a more formal budget protocol review. So when we meet with our principals and directors, we have an outline and a format that we can review to see how they're doing on their budgets and their department, their school site. Do they need more more assistance or guidance? And so we have that built in, and we are rolling that out uh, after we return from Christmas. Mm -hmm. So we continue to work on etern ex internal efficiencies, uh, looking at our enrollment. Um, like Joe said earlier, we have um, certified our enrollment for 1819, and um, we had a, did show a loss of 172 students. We continue to look at our ADA and any um, efficiencies that we can do in that. You know, increasing that ADA, you know, can bump us up, you know, a million dollars if we can get it up a half a percent to one percent. Um, to help with our special ed costs, we've um, set up a task force that we're meeting and looking at their um, expenses to see what we can possibly, you know, reduce or is there, you know, things that um, can be changed there. Um, and one of the things, how to become more efficient. So one of the, the things that Helen and our director of purchasing, Richard, uh, uh, Katie Powell in transportation, and uh, Nancy Lutich in adult ed, uh, we commend, uh, it was a fun day. Um, we had surplus vehicles, so our adult ed program no longer needed these vehicles. And one of the ideas from the task force was why don't we use uh, our own district vehicles to transport our special ed students uh, because we outsource taxi services to um, transport. And so we're in the process of developing that. So we have the vehicles, now we're working on the uh, drivers. 
Um, but that is something thinking out of the box and how we can do become more internal efficient. So that's one success that we have. Mm -hmm. Okay, and as also as Joe said, um, our audit report um, will be presented to you in January, February timeframe. We um, met with the auditors yesterday and we have no findings this year um, and the report should be available, um, finalized by Saturday. Um, it has to be um, uploaded to the feds by Saturday. Um, and then the next step after that will be um, in March, we'll present our second interim report to you and give you an, uh, a snapshot of where we are at that time. So at this time, we ask that staff, staff recommends that we get an approval of a positive 1819 first interim. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm just going to move and that we um, have a motion to approve. Okay, there, okay, well, can we, can we motion and then do it afterwards? No. No. Okay. Um, Still, Bill Beecher would like to make a comment on this. Thank you. Uh, while she's bringing that up, uh, our variances used to run 3 to 5% before Joe and Helen started working on this over a year ago. And uh, super job but it's a tight budget. Now what I'm gonna do for you tonight is uh, what you usually do in business or when you do reviews like this, it's called sensitivity analysis or what ifs. And so I'm gonna step you through what happens when we go through a different series of races for our employees, what the impact would be on the budget. So if you'll indulge me, <coughs> I'm going to look at a 2% raise, a 4% raise, and a 7% raise done in next year's budget and the following year. Because you can't do it this year. We're already committed. So with that in mind, let's take a look at what the impacts of a 2% does. It adds $5.4 in, in spending. It reduces the ending balance to 8.7. And this is an important factor that most of you have never had to deal with it takes us down to eight days of cash. So if the state misses on sending us a check, we may not be able to pay our teachers or our vendors. So a 2% raise would actually be rejected by the, the County Office of Education. Not by the administration, but by the County Office of Education. This happened last year during negotiations. So let's take a look at the impact of a 4% raise. It adds 10.8 million reduces the ending balance to 3.3 million. It takes us down to three days of cash. And these guys would go crazy because you don't want to be there and it absolutely would be rejected. And if there's a 7% raise, it adds 19 million in cost, reduces the ending balance to, we owe money, 4.8 million. Absolutely no cash on hand and would be rejected by the COE. We might even be taken over by the state. So there are alternatives. There can be trade-off between wages and health benefits, which can help young and old employees. As a, for instance, young employees are young and healthy and they're bulletproof. They'd rather have higher wages and have higher deduction, higher copay on their health insurance and get a subsequent increase in pay. Older people are worried about their retirement Retirement's based on wages. So if we increase their wages by giving them a lower health plan, then they've got 20 years of collecting more money because they have a higher retirement pay. So I believe we need to consider alternatives that give employees options. Right now, the employees don't have any options. It's fixed in concrete. It's monolithic. So thank you for your time. Can I clarify anything? Did I go over anybody's head and I need to explain some of this? Thank you. <coughs> okay. So now we can go back and have a motion. And this is a really important item to support, I would say, so we can get, you know, everything paid for here. <laughs> 
So anybody have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Is there any op opposition? Aye. <coughs> okay. It has been approved. <laughs> and there's an abstention. I'm abstaining. Oh, okay. So what's the call on that one? Five one one. Okay. <clears throat> um, the re resolution on the report, and we need you again, on the use of developer fees. That's the right one. Okay. Good evening, President Os Osmondson. You know, you can just, everybody can just call me Karen. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's too you. hard. My last name's too hard. Just say Karen. <laughs> I can say it, Osmondson. Okay, well, I mean, a lot of people have President difficulty. Karen. <laughs> President uh, Karen. <laughs> Dr. Rodriguez, um, board members, cabinet, and um, members of the community and um, my colleagues. I'm Helen Balanzi, Director of Finance, and I have with me Victor Sandoval, the Director of Maintenance Operations and Facilities. Tonight, we bring forward the accounting for um, the developer fees for the 1718 school year, which shows the amount received and how the funds were um, used. Uh, this is a requirement um, by the state to have this to approve 180, no later than 180 days after the end of the fiscal year. So, um, we're just a little background on the justification of developer fees. Um, since a lot of you are new, I, I wanted to kind of give you an overview. So there's a justifi justification study done in the spring um, that brings, the study shows what um, the new rates can be charged, um, and it's usually a um, increase, a COLA increase on our current rates. And so there are two levels of fees. Level one is um, new, on new residential and new uh, commercial and level two is on new residential. And the difference between one and two on the residential, and I wanted to make sure this is clear, um, it's based on uh, the need for construction of new facilities and um, modern new facilities and modernization of existing facilities and also the capacity um, and impact of development on um, school and school enrollment. Um, Fees are collected, um, the, the fees that are collected can be used on, you know, new classrooms, multi-purpose rooms, playgrounds, parking lots, parent drop-off areas, gyms, restrooms, et cetera. Um, some of our projects that we've done, um, the most recent one being a new classroom at McQuitty, and then we've also done some at MSD, Aptos Junior, um, Lakeview Middle School, and we also put a part portable in at Transportation. So that's a quick overview of um, what will come to you again in the spring to be approved. So the accounting for the developer fees. This shows that we um, received a little over a million dollars in developer fees. And what we've spent that on uh, has been building portables. That historically we've um, paid the rent on building por you know, the portables at the sites. And I'm pleased to say that since 1516, uh, we've decreased 10 portables at our sites. And we've put in more, um, what do you call it, um, stationary, <laughs> you know, things. Um, so um, the other thing is that we do pay for installation and removal of portables. The 116 was mainly used for the uh, removal of portables at McQuitty. So we do have a balance of 1.27 million, and this will be used for the ongoing rent of the portables that we continue to have, which is approximately 50. And um, then we'll be using it, looking to have, use it for other projects um, 
to supplement you know our Measure L at this point and other 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 projects that um, we have in the district. You do have in the board document um, a detail by school site of the ex uh, expenditures. So at this point, um, do you have any questions or any speakers or? Is there any speakers? <clears throat> okay. <laughs> so we're going to approve this motion. I make a motion to approve resolution 18-19-19, the report on the use of developer fees. And thank you. I thought it was a very good presentation. Thank you. Second that motion. All those in favor. Aye. 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 It's 7-0. Okay, so this one, I, I don't think we need to do anything but vote on it because we already did this last time. So um, the, at the, the previous board, um, several members requested a brief data from PCCS yeah. that wasn't provided. It's only three slides. Um, for the other one, the, um, for the other renewal, there were no follow-up questions, and so there's no need for discussion on the second. But we would request that you allow um, Drew to speak to the data that was requested previously and not provided. So if I may, before we move on with this item, we are at 10.02, and we, ha we still have to go back to closed session and come back and report on those action items. Um, so I, I, I would like to mo make a motion at this time to extend the meeting to, let's say, midnight to be safe. Oh, my gosh. Second. All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Opposed. All those opposed? Aye. 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 Uh, good evening. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good evening, um, President Osmondson, um, Dr. Rodriguez, and my, uh, members of the Board of Trustees. Um, as they mentioned earlier, my name is Drew Singleton. I'm the interim principal at PCCS. Um, as we mentioned, uh, we, showed, we did the presentation last month, and there was a couple of things they had questions on, so I'm just coming to show you some of that information that they requested. Uh, the first was about our SBAC uh, data. Um, we uh, basically, that got all messed up. <coughs> Sorry, <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Um, in 2014-15, 28% met the standards in uh, English language arts, 27 met the standards in, 27% uh, met the standards in 15-16. 16, 17, 29, and in 17, 18, 35 percent met the standard. Um, I'll just I'll show you both, and then wow, there's I don't know what happened to those. Um, in 14, 15 for math, it's lower than that. 15 percent met. Uh, 14 percent in 15, 16. 15 percent in 16, 17, and in 17, 18, 16 percent met the standards. It stays pretty um, consistent throughout that. Uh, part of the reason for the data looking like that is because for our school. Um, the SBAC is not really a very good measure for the progress of the students that we get. We have a very transient population. They come and they go. We have a very small sample size, a very small testing size of students. Um, and a lot of the times we get students that come into us, you know, for instance, when the 11th graders take it, we'll get a student that comes into us at the beginning of 11th grade. So even if those numbers were high, it wouldn't really be a good indicator of what we're doing just because the kids are coming in and coming out. Um, so frequently that it's kind of hard to track how they're actually doing. Um, we are actually working. That's the conversation we're having right now is coming up with a way where we can actually get data that we can track how the students are doing in our school from the time they come to us and then from the time that they're actually with us so that we can get some accurate data on how they're actually do how our teachers are doing so we can speak to it. It's, it's kind of a frustrating thing for everybody there because we like some solid data that we can look at to see whether or not things are working or not. Um, and right now we just don't have that system in place, so we're looking into that. Um, one of the other things I asked about was our, I had mentioned fifth year grads were not counted into our graduation um, totals, and so they asked to see what those were. Um, so uh, that's just an indication of what our, how many fifth year graduates we had in the following years. 2014 we had five, in 2015 six, 2016 ten, and then there was a pretty significant drop in 17 and 18 with three and with two um, fifth year grads. 
So that's, those were the two pieces that had been requested. Um, and now I would like to request that uh, the Board of Trustees approves our charter renewal for the next five years. I have one question, if I may. Certainly. So when you, when you say I met standard, what does that mean on the SBAC? That they met 15% of your students met um, at least um, one year's growth? Uh, not one year's growth, just met, met the standard of their, their ability to read in that level. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Basically passed the test as opposed to not. I would like to make a motion to renew Pacific Coast Charter Schools um, charter renewal. Second. Somebody. Hello. How does that data that you showed us um, compare to like the rest of the district? Do you know? Uh, it's pretty low. It's low. Okay. Yeah, it's fairly low. Okay, so you have some room to improve. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So I do have one comment, if I may. So um, one of the things that I mentioned earlier was that I wanted to be more inclusive of our dependent charter schools, mm -hmm. and part of uh, what I want to see happen, if at all possible, is to be inclusive of their scores. So when our SBAC scores come in, I also want to see those scores along with, with ours uh, to see how we are doing as, as a district entirely. Um, and if we can offer support, then by all means, um, do that. And so with that, um, is, there a, is there a person a second? Okay, all those in favor. Aye. 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 Seven zero. Thank you very much. Okay, Dime. <laughs> Diamond Technology Institute Charter Renewal. The motion. We're not doing any. <coughs> we just we talked about it last last board meeting. I'll make a motion to approve um, Diamond Tech's charter renewal. And I'll second that motion. Um, oh. You've done an excellent work turning that yeah. score around. Yeah, um, you and have. I can only imagine, um, you know, um, the progress that we're going to see in coming years. Yeah, You've done a that. great job. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Seven zero. Aye. Um, okay. <laughs> Second reading revisions to board policy, administrative regulations, and the uniform consent. Procedures. That's you, Dr. Shona. Thank you, President Karen Osmondson. <laughs> you can do both. Board Trustees Dr. Rodriguez, this is a second reading now submitted as, a, as an action item of the revisions to the board policy and administrative regulations for uniform <coughs> complaint procedures. This is critical as a board adopted uniform system of complaint processes required by the law to enable our staff, students, parents, and community members to voice their concerns, have their issues investigated towards a timely and appropriate resolution. The revisions reflect the new California School Boards Association's recommended policy updates, and the revisions ensure compliance with education code and state and federal laws. The main modifications as highlighted in red in your materials include an expanded list of programs that are now covered, um, bullying, unlawful discrimination, retaliation, foster youth, and homeless. Okay, so I'm going to have a, we're going to have, it's an action item, so I need a motion. Um, do we have any speakers? No speakers. Motion. Make a motion to approve. <laughs> okay, thank you. Sorry. A second. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Seven zero. The next one is an, an interesting one, actually. <laughs> it's, um, it's the, let's see, I, I, I've been looking at it. It's, the memorandum of understanding between Pacific Elementary <coughs> Community Action Board of Santa Cruz County and the Wattsville Aptos Santa Cruz Adult Education. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. 
Congratulations, everybody. Exciting times are ahead. Um, this is our uh, memorandum of understanding. We are expanding our Santa Cruz component and going up to Davenport. So this is the MOU that you have before you. Um, we've been asked to expand in various areas because we're in the county, so this is the entire county, so this is going up north <laughs> in the northern part. Yep. Even further <laughs> north. Even further. <laughs> Davenport, you know, is a small little community and, and um, they have a need there, so we are on our way up. Wow, so, so you would be having classes there actually in Davenport? Right, in the community center there. In the community center there you'd have classes. Mm -hmm. Whoa, <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Yeah. But when they, when you say community action board, oh, we're working with them too. Our local community action board, Maria Elena. Yeah. Um, we work with her and the component up there and the whole thing. You know, it's just more partnerships and um, an opportunity to expand um, mainly ESL classes up in Davenport. And in, in, in the community action board, well, I know they work up there already, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why they're you're collaborating with them, right? Because of the work they're doing up there already. All right. So I, a, ma a motion. Are there any speakers? No. I would like to make a motion that we support. Um, but do we have any speakers? No, no speakers. No. Okay, I do have a question, if I may. So, what would be the cost of the district, if any? To PVUSD, mm -hmm. there's no cost because it comes out of the Santa Cruz budget to expand north. Thank you. I have a question. Um, Nancy, hi. Hi. What, um, what, what portion does Community Action Board hold in this MOU? I, I was confused about that. So what do you want me to do, read it here? <laughs> <laughs> we have worked in... We've worked with uh, Community Action Board on numerous projects, and they were the ones that said, we need some help up there. Okay. So we're... Are they funding a piece of this? No. No, they're just... They're just supportive, and they're there, and it's uh, one of the things they wanted to see happen, so we're going north. Okay, great. And we're taking a teacher where, um, that we... And we're not even hiring another teacher. We're taking another um, teacher where the numbers were kind of low and moving them up there. Okay, great. I'm in support of this. Good. Thank you for expansion. Good. So do we have a first and second now? A motion to approve. Okay. Motion. To, let's let's uh, vote. <laughs> All those in favor. Aye. 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 Do we have a second? I'm sorry, did you second it? Danny. Did you second it? So yeah. No, I okay. think Danny made the motion. motion. I made the motion, so I'll second. There you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, all in favor again. Aye. 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 <coughs> okay. This thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. So this is, I guess, call for nominations mm -hmm. of this delicate assembly for CSBA. So, so, so excellent. So we. Um, so we went ahead and we tabled this item so that the new board could be present for the nominations of this. Um, we have the ability to nominate a member to the delegate assembly for our area. If you look at the attachments, you'll see that we're in region 9A, um, which is the San Benito, Santa Cruz counties. Um, there is going to be one opening, um, George Wiley, um, whose term expires in 2019 is the one who would be replaced. And so we have the ability, if people would like to nominate someone from this board um, or someone else, um, the only concession if it's someone else that's not present is we had to have prior consent um, in order to nominate them. Um, and we do, the one pager, it's just a pretty simple one pager, but the one pager does have to be sent in prior to January 7th, and they don't allow any late submissions according to the documentation. So you're saying that it can be one of these seven governing board members here? My understanding is yes, you can nominate someone from this board to to do the petition, meaning that you fill out the application to then be nominated at, for a delegate, delegate assembly, yes. 
Well, I would say that maybe we ask if there's anyone here that's interested in that. Anybody here want to be on the Delegate Assembly? <laughs> so what, what happens, how many, how many meetings do they go to a year? Do we know all about that? So it says in here yeah, um, that they, I believe, oh, it's in our, it's on our board docs actually. Um, yeah. So they, um, they, they meet twice a year. Okay. And the meeting is typically in Sacramento is my understanding. Generally, yeah. yes. Do you know the times of year? Like, is it spring, fall, um, summer, winter? I do not, but I can. We can. Um, while you, while there's additional conversation, we can um, search it really quick. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the, the delegate, is, the delegate assembly is different than, like, say, the conferences, or, or are they held concurrently? Um, I, I now have them for you. I, it, they did just have one. Um, so they did just have one on the 28th. Um, and their next one, it does not state when the next one is. I can continue to search at this point. But they did just have one right at the CSBA conference. And this is for one year period of time? Or, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Um, it's two years. It should be two, a two-year two term. Two-year okay, two okay. term. So does this board have to approve it, or does anybody who's interested in running can nominate themselves? It looks like we can just fill out the forms and send um, them on in. No, um, it specifically states that, um, that it does have to be board approved, which okay. is why we're bringing it back. It says, if nominating, board action required. OK. Uh, action for the fact that we're going to perhaps nominate someone? Yes. And then you're saying it has to be done by January 7th. That's what it says, but yes. But we don't have another meeting before January 7th. Exactly. We can't nominate someone that's not here, that's not interested. That is accurate. So we're kind of getting in a position where at this point it would probably be ideal for one mm -hmm. of someone of us seven to volunteer for this for the next two, to, to be the, to not, you know, if, if we want to have a representative from PBUSD it. at the delegate assembly, then yes. Yeah. And, and what? Oh, it's May 19th and 20th is the next. Um, did you find it too? <laughs> if, if May somebody, 19th and 20th. If so if one of us said we'd do it, and then let's say something happened, and, you know, because we're not sure of the dates and they couldn't make it, could someone else go in their place? I don't believe so. Okay. I believe it has so to be. Maybe. And it is May 19th and 20th. Is the next meeting? Of, it it of was just 2019. Found. Yes, we okay. just found out. So it sounds like they're fall and spring. Probably. So the ne and the then fall and one, one would likely be at CSBA in, in San Diego. Yeah. And they do things like what do they do exactly? Okay. Policies. So um, the delegate assembly <laughs> um, works with local district, county offices, and board of directors to support um, interests of school districts and county offices of education throughout the state so they do advocacy work. Um, I have a question. May I? Mm -hmm. um, so if a, a nomination is submitted, it's still not guaranteed you're, that you're going to be part of the delegate assembly, right? That is There's, accurate. Okay. Yes, so the person would need to, and I could support them, but would need to fill out the biographical sketch form, which is a fairly simple form, but okay, it does true. explicitly state no late um, submissions accepted. Um, and there are just three questions. But why are you interested in becoming a delegate? Mm -hmm. Describe your skills and experiences that you would bring. Describe your activities involvement on your local board community, CSBA. And what are the biggest challenges facing governing boards and how can CSBA help address it are the three questions that you would um, have to answer. Respond. But as you're saying, you would help someone of course. fill it out. Um, and what, what were the dates again? So we only have the May 19th? The May 19th and 20th, and then the likelihood it would be at the next, at the before oh, the, conference. the next CSBA yeah. conference. It was a few days before the, next, the prior conference. Next fall. That's just what we said. In San Diego. And then, and then probably in 2020, it's probably around May again. Okay. 
And it would be in San Francisco instead of San Diego. <laughs> and the other two probably she should not. Sacramento. All right. So I think I'm interested. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I, um, so I'd like to nominate you, Maria. That would be, I think, you know, really you're very well qualified to be a delegate. I know the other delegates from our area, and I heard somebody say something about replacing George Wiley, who's not replaceable. He's irreplaceable. He's amazing. And um, both George and Tracy, um, sorry, not Tracy, Deborah Tracy. Pro are very very bright and they bring back lots of information um, and and then disseminate it at the school board association meeting which then I disseminate to you guys so um, it, I, I think you'd be great at it and I think it would be very interesting I do too I'd like to second that for Maria <laughs> all right so we're gonna we're gonna vote for Maria now yep. we do that? Mm -hmm. okay so all those motion by Kim and a second by me and all those in favor for Maria. Hi. Poor Maria. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can think it's, it's going to be good. Okay, so we're not doing the report and discussion items. So consent. What's that? Consent. And the consent. So the consent items has a lot of great stuff on it. Let's see. I would make, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Does anybody have anything they would like to pull and have me amend my motion? There's a lot of great stuff on there. I, I don't no, I like would like to second that motion. All right, we have a first and second. I'll call a vote. Yes, I'll call a vote. There's a lot of really great stuff on that I could even talk about because there's really important stuff on there, but you know, we can talk about it maybe another time. Okay. Um, so I'm going to just call for a motion and pass it. So do we have a first and second? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay, that's call for a motion. A vote. Vote. A motion. Vote. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And then now we've got a call for um, any public comments on closed session. So is there any comments for closed session? On closed session? I don't think public probably comments. is. From the public. Any comments on closed session from the public that are out here? <laughs> so, as we're going to close the meeting and go into closed session, we'll come back to report. But I don't know if you, I know if you guys all want to stay for the, the closed session. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs>
I'm reopening this, the closed session. Okay, so Public we're going to start with it. Reporting out. We're, well, the closed session. So we're reporting out, so expulsion. Expulsion. Okay. Um, I, rem I move to approve the district re recommendation for employee discipline against 18-19-005 PVHS. That full expulsion, just say full, full expulsion. For full expulsion for the remainder of the 2018-2019 school year with placement at another school outside the district with the exception of new school no, on a strict no. behavior contract. Uh, yeah, well, I guess you can see all that. Okay. <laughs> all those. You need a uh, second. Second. All those. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then, is Danny going to do it? Where, where'd Danny go? So, what part is he doing? Can you, would you be able to do the, um, um, yeah. Well, if he doesn't do it, do you want to do it? <laughs> so I can do the, yeah, for right now. So, I'm not, I think he was going to read okay. over mm -hmm. some stuff. Um, okay, so, um, I move to approve the certificated personnel report as presented by the district administration with the addition of one admin appointment and two separations from service. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Again, so are we done? <laughs> I uh, move to approve the classified personnel report as presented by the district administration with the additions of one new hire provisionary and seven leaves of absence. Second. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we're done. No. <laughs> no. no. And what? Oh, Danny's going to have something? Okay. Um, the foregoing separation settlement agreement for classified employee 3400 was approved at a regular called meeting of the governing board of the Pajaro Valley Unified School District on the 12th of December 18th by the following vote. Seven ayes, zero noes, zero absent, zero abstained. Um, the governing board is also pleased to announce two inmate administrative appointments. It was Mr. Andrew Singleton. Mr. Singleton will serve students of PVUSD as a principal for Pacific Coast Charter School. Mr. Singleton began his teaching career at PVUSD in 2001 as a health teacher at Aptos High School for one year. He continued his teaching career in Arizona, promoting to assistant director in administration in 2003 and to principal in 2005. Mr. Singleton returned to our district in 2014 to serve as principal of Brennan Sons High, where he, where he was promoted as culture of academic and personal excellence. Mr. Singleton received his degree from San Jose State in biological services. He also has a master's from the University of Phoenix in secondary education and a master's from Northern U University in educational leadership. And the second one was Mr. Burr Guthrie, uh, adult education coordinator. Mr. Guthrie worked as a teacher and department chair for Watsonville Aptos Adult Ed starting in 2000. Mr. Guthrie continued his career by promoting to Assistant Director of Tamalpais Adult and Community Education in 2005. Mr. Guthrie was an administrator for the Oakland Adult and Career Education for four years starting in 2006. In 2010, Mr. Guthrie became the principal of Berkeley Adult School and most recently the program coordinator for the Campbell Adult and Community Education, a position which he has held for three years. Mr. Guthrie brings extensive experience back to PVUSD and we look forward to his vast expertise in adult ed. Mr. Guthrie has a degree in business administration from Fort Lewis College and a master's from San Jose State in educational leadership. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we are done. Fine. <laughs> oh, what time is it? Okay, so we are done, and our next meeting is not until January. Yeah. Michelle? The claim for damages. Yeah, yeah. there's oh, one you're on it, right, yeah. Oh, do we have to do the claim for damages? Oh, we have to do that one, too. So under item 3.7, the 
board approve to decline, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a claim for damages for the Anna Moreno versus PBUSD with a 7 0 vote. No, right. 6 0 1. 6 0 1. No, yes, 6 0 1. Abstain. 1 abstention. Now we're done. You can adjourn. Okay, meeting adjourned until <laughs> January. <laughs> Holy moly. Oh, yeah.